term. And over the last um, three plus years, we have helped over 2,000 people from across the globe to land their very first jobs in tech. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on as an organization is on the quality of the facilitators and the trainers that we bring on board. Myself and Femena, the founders of Tenalytics, we are industry experts. We've been there, we've done it, and we've helped so many other people transition, okay? So it's a totally different ball game when you learn from people that have been on the road, that have done the job, and they are, they are teaching you and you are learning based on their experience, and you also try to replicate the things that we have done in the past. Okay, so my name is Adeza Suleiman, the founder of Tenalytics. I'm a data analytics expert, and I've worked as a data science consultant in the UK, in the US, and I have close to a decade years of experience. Started my journey as a management consultant, but then I transitioned into data analytics, and I'll give a bit of um, detail into that in the next few slides. And if Emena would come back to also share his own story as well. If Emena is the co-founder, worked as a data science contractor in the UK, in the US, led the data support um, team in the post office of the UK, and also worked with one of the largest medical technology companies in Ireland as a global systems analyst. And if Emena would come to share his story, like I said, but let's dive into uh, the main bits of how it all began. Okay, and I'll start with my own journey. If Emena would come to share his own journey as well. Now, the first part I would like to highlight is the journey of interest, where it all started from. There must always be an interest, okay? Just like about 50 plus of you currently on the call, it started from somewhere. You have an interest to get into the tech ecosystem. The interest for you could vary. Mine was impact and also the money. So I saw the impact I could get in the tech ecosystem or the impact I could generate in the tech ecosystem and also the money that I also stood to make as somebody within the tech ecosystem. My first degree was in industrial chemistry. So just like so many of you, I had no background in tech. I had no computer science degree and I studied industrial chemistry during my first degree. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate you know, to this because you are also in the same shoes. But then again, okay, but then again, just give me one second. I think, all right, I need to make a fake co-host. Just give me one second, guys. Sorry for the disruption. All right, so my first degree was in industrial chemistry, and I'm sure so many of you can also relate to that, okay? You, you study sociology, you study physiology, totally different from anything related in tech, and I started that way too. And my first profession, the very first job I got was a management consultant with a company called FITC. And FITC is an organization owned by the Central Bank of Nigeria, the, the NDIC, the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the Bankers Committee, all right? So these um, governments regulate, these regulators, the CBN, the NDIC, the, Bank, the Bankers Committee owned FITC, and I worked for FITC, and that was my very first job professionally in a structured environment. And I worked as a management consultant, so I did not start out as a tech professional. Okay, and this was where I met Efe Mena. All right, this was where I met Efe Mena. Okay, so while working as a management consultant, a management consultant simply goes into companies and you help those companies achieve their objectives by looking at their processes, by helping them determine where opportunities are and how they would latch into those opportunities. Okay, so that was the very first thing I did. And as a management consultant, you get to work on several projects. And I did work on several projects. I worked on projects with the Bank of Industry, BOI in Nigeria. I also worked with organizations, the BOA, the Bank of Agriculture, worked with Access Bank, worked with the Security and Exchange Commission, also worked with the NDIC, which is one of the owners of the company that I worked with at that time. So I worked on several projects related to organization restructuring, process optimization, and so on and so forth. 
And at this time, while working on these different projects, I could see that I was not in a role that had anything to do with data, but other team members that were on the same project had one or two things, making presentations and showing the type of insights they had gotten using data. So I got a little bit interested. And myself and Efemena, at this point in time, we wanted more. All right. So management consulting was, was great because we were doing amazing work. However, we felt there was a lot more out there for us. So we had started to research to see where opportunities were. And data analytics, data science somehow came across our radar. So and at, that, at that point, we had started learning just a little bit of Excel. And I got involved in a project that changed everything for me. And that was a project with NNPC. Okay, the largest national integrated oil and gas company in Nigeria. So I was involved on this project and the project lasted for two years. And for two years, every single week, first flight, 7 a.m. on Monday, I left Lagos and I flew to Abuja. And Friday, 2 p.m. flight, I flew back to Lagos. And I did that for two years on this particular project. And it was an organization restructuring project for the NNPC at that point in time. And that was the very first time I did my end-to-end -end analytics project using Excel. So you'd ask me the question, Adez, I thought you said you had done nothing related to data. So how did you now work on a project like this? So let me give you the background to this story. So you know the way everybody would have Excel proficiency on your CV, you'd put excellent when, you know, we all had that CV, right? Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Office, you put excellent as, you know, part of your skills. So I had that on my CV. And this was me very new into my career, less than a year or just about a year into my career, I got involved on this project. So this, the CEO, we went for a meeting with one of the COOs of the ABU, so the NNPC at that point had ABUs, Autonomous Business Units. And we met with the COO. And the COO was a bit concerned about the employees at that point in time. And he needed some analysis to be carried out to know the type of staff he had, when they were retiring, how they will be replaced, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this my MD, the MD of FITC, I was in that meeting, I was taking notes as usual and all of that. And she looked at me and said, Adesa, you said you know how to use Excel, correct? At that point, I couldn't say no. So I said, yes, I know how to use Excel. So she said, you're going to work on this particular task. And immediately I started to sweat, even though the AC was on, I was sweating. So I had my suit on and everything, but I was sweating profusely because I was very nervous. My Excel skill was basic, the most basic you can ever imagine. All right. So that day I went back to my hotel. I had gotten the data set from uh, somebody within the organization. And I, I, I stared at my computer for good one, for good one hour. I didn't know what to do. OK, but then I was just like, let me just start and see how far I'll be able to go with this. All right. So I started and I did the analysis in the most basic fashion you can ever imagine. And when I say my Excel skill was at the, at the barest minimum at that time, it was truly at the barest minimum. Okay, so I did a lot of research. I went online. I you know, researched companies that also analyze and do um, and send out reports. So I looked at the style of that presentation to see if I could copy that. Okay, and I did what I could do, you know, within the limits of my capacity at that point in time. And I think after two days, I was able to come up with a report and recommendations on what I think should be done in the NNPC at that point in time, okay? And this was me who knew nothing, okay? I just did it the way I felt I could do it, of course, to the limit of my, my experience using Excel at that point in time. Now, what was, what was amazing was as basic as my Excel skills were at that point in time, I was the only person on that project that could use Excel, okay? So, and they interestingly, they found my recommendations very, very insightful. And my recommendations went ahead to get published in the dailies. And so many changes happened 
in the NNPC at that time. Of course, I can't talk about the specifics of the analysis that I did because it's very confidential and also sensitive. However, my recommendations were taken on board. They were implemented. The changes were in the papers. And I could see that this is Adesa, very young. I had no clue. I had no idea that you know what I was doing was this, you know, was going to be this impactful. And I could see myself giving recommendations, and it's going way ahead to be featured in the newspapers. My recommendations were also taking all the way to the presidency. The president, the vice president, saw my recommendations. I gave a presentation on my findings, and I won two awards on this particular project. Okay? I won two awards on this project. Still surprising to me. I'm going back to the analysis. If I show you if I showed you today what I did at that time, you would all laugh at me, especially people that know how to use Excel, because it was very, very basic. But I did it the way I could, and I got it done. I had my report go to the presidency. It was approved. My recommendations were used to come up with a succession plan and so many other things within the NNPC. And it was then it dawned on me that I was on to something very, very huge. And I could see that even though I was so young, and even though my knowledge base was still very limited, this particular skill could actually take me very far. I could see that. And if I could be in a position presenting to you know, professionals, to levels far above me, it means that this profession could also give me a whole lot of money. And this sparked my interest. And that was where the whole thing started from. So I went back to the office. I was excited. And like I mentioned, myself and Efemena, at that time, we had already started to learn. Okay? But we really did not have a clear direction on where we were going. So we were doing it afraid. We we're doing it afraid. And we decided that no matter what, we are going to learn. And we are also going to ensure that we you know, make a way for ourselves in this particular area. So I had an accountability partner. I had somebody in the Femena that I could you know, talk about what I was learning. He also could show me the things he was learning at the same time. So we started learning together on our own, teaching each other. And I'll tell you, it was very, very tough and very difficult. Looking back today, we can only say, you know, we are we made it this far. But at that time, there was no mentor. There was nobody that could tell us that this was the right thing for you to learn. This is where you should start. This is where you should stop. So sometimes we'd learn something and we get stuck. I don't know what to do. A feminine does not know what to do. So we, are, we got stuck at some point and it took a long time before we figured it out. And eventually we were learning little by little. So myself and Efemena, we were accountability partners, and we decided that we're going to do it no matter what happened and get into this career path. So we requested in the organization at that time at FITC that we wanted to be involved on any data analytics project at that point in time, okay? Because we wanted to put the skills we had learned into practice. So we worked on different other projects in the organization, and also requested to be listed as trainers in that company, all right? But before we did that, I took all the reports in my department. FMNR took all the reports in his department, and we built a template for the organization, coming up with fantastic visuals and presentation, because we were learning, our Excel skills were getting better. We could do things that nobody in the organization could do because we're learning step by step, teaching each other, collaborating, and so on and so forth. So we looked at the reports at that time, and we felt that we could do something a lot better. So we revamped the reports, even though nobody asked us to do it. Okay, And this was you know, the both of us taking the skills we had learned and trying to make a way for ourselves, even though nobody said we should do it. But we pushed and pushed until we were able to create reports that served as templates today in that same organization. And the company was highly impressed with what we were doing. Now, we didn't stop there. We also requested, because FITC at that time has had a training department, and the training department provided training to 
players within the financial services sector, right? To the banks, to the insurance companies, to the capital markets, and so on and so forth. So myself and Efemina requested to be facilitators and subject matter experts when it came to Excel training. So we had developed skills. And for us to take it to the next level, we also realized that we need to put ourselves out there. Okay, we need to showcase that we actually have these skills and put ourselves out there. So we requested to be listed as Excel facilitators. Of course, some people looked at us and said, hey, who are these young boys who are trying to, you know, teach senior managers, teach people who were, you know, highly placed and so on and so forth. But the company took a chance on us and they agreed and listed us as facilitators. And that was where we started facilitating for so many organizations, Nigerian breweries, the banks, Access Bank, First Bank, GT Bank, and so many, the CBN, the Central Bank, we facilitated sessions in areas you can, you would never imagine we could have gotten into at that point in time. So we did this. And at that point, we started to gets recognized in the organization as the go-to person for anything Excel or anything data analytics. Now, bear in mind, at this time, all we knew very well how to use was only Excel. However, we started to learn Power BI because we knew that there was something beyond Excel. We didn't know this before until we started learning more. And we knew that we needed to learn Power BI. We added Power BI and then we added SQL to our skill sets, okay? And this was the second part. Now going to the third part of my journey, I'll call it the journey of growth. And this was where I decided that, look, I think I could do something a lot bigger than what I was doing. Myself and if men, I'll tell you for a fact, we were highly ambitious with regards to taking our career to the next level, very ambitious. There was nothing that was going to stop us, no matter how difficult it was going to get. We had that ambition and drive that we were going to succeed in this, even though we had no clue what we were doing at that time, okay? So if Pemena had traveled, he had left the country at this time. I was still in Nigeria. And then I started to apply to jobs that would give me the opportunity on a day-to-day -to, -day to test and use my analytic skills. I was very good with Excel. I had added Power BI and I had also added SQL. So I was applying to jobs left and right. I got a lot of rejections because most of the jobs I applied to were far above my skill level. Far above my skill level. But I kept on applying, got a lot of rejections. And eventually, I applied to a job that gave me another chance and gave me the opportunity to work for them. And I'll tell you for a fact that if you had looked at my CV at that time and you looked at the job requirements, there was no way I was ever going to get that job, okay? Because first of all, they wanted somebody with five years cognitive experience. And at that time, I had only four years. I had only four years experience. And my experience was not entirely in data. My, my experience was as a management consultant, but also doing some data-related activities that myself and Efemena coined for ourselves within that organization, okay? Now, they also wanted somebody with a bachelor's in economics, statistics, business intelligence. I had industrial chemistry, so I did not also meet that requirement, okay? They also wanted somebody that had Python, MongoDB, Excel, Power BI, and SQL. And at that time, I had only Excel, Power BI, and SQL. But I said I was going to go you know, ahead and apply anyway. Worst case, they'll give me another rejection. In fact, I didn't even know what MongoDB was all about. I had no clue there was anything called MongoDB. All right? I went ahead and applied with my Excel, Power BI, and SQL skills. And long story short, I got the job as an MIS analyst. And an MIS analyst is simply a data analyst that does analytics within the organization and reports to the management. So you get data from the company, you analyze the data, come up with recommendations, and tell the management what to do. That was the job. So I was very excited. And this was where I would say I started to consolidate my skills as an analyst. Remember, 
this organization had wanted somebody that had Python, MongoDB. I had none of that. They wanted somebody with five years experience. I had four. They wanted somebody with economic statistics, business intelligence as their first degree. I had industrial chemistry. But I went ahead and applied and I got the job. Okay. Now, while working on this role, I worked for four different companies and not at different intervals. Simultaneously, I worked for four companies. And these four companies were very, very big, very large companies. And the company I got this job with is Sahara Group, one of the largest energy conglomerates in sub-Saharan Africa. All right. And while working for Sahara Group, I got to work with Egbin, Egbin Power PLC, which is the largest privately owned power generating company in sub-Saharan Africa. I also got to work the same time with Ikeja Electric, the largest privately owned power distribution company in West Africa. And I worked with FIPL, First Independent Power Limited, which is the a power generating company in River State in Nigeria. And of course, ETC, which is an energy training company for the manufacturing and the power sector. So I worked for these four companies at the same time. And what was I doing? I was getting their data, analyzing the data, giving recommendations to the management and also to the owners of the company. Of course, the owners of the company don't care the type of skills you have. If you know Python, if you know MongoDB, these are billionaires who own multiple companies and they want to know what decision should I take to take my company to the next level? What exactly is going on in the company with regards to the data that we are generating? So objectively, I could take decisions. So that was what I was doing on a day-to-day. -day. And this was the very first welcome message I received when I got into Sahara Group. And it was an amazing journey for me at this particular point in time. But again, I knew that there was still something more for me, okay? And this is where there's a lesson to learn from here. And this is where organizations would also test you. Organizations would also put things out there that seems like you can never achieve. So some people would see those requirements and go like, I don't have these skills. I don't even know what MongoDB is all about. And they don't go ahead to apply. I never for one day on this role, there was no task, there was no activity for one day that required me to use Python to solve any problem on the job. And I started to ask myself the question, and I went ahead to ask HR as well. Why did you have Python when you, know, you were trying to recruit for this role? Why did you also have MongoDB as part of the requirements? And that's why every job advert you see out there is a wish list. Okay, so because I never had to use Python for one day, every single thing I needed to do to help this company grow was simply with the use of Excel, Power BI, and SQL. In fact, my very first project was a data warehouse project, helping the company to build a data warehouse to store all the data generated by these different companies. But again, I didn't stop here. My journey of growth did not stop. I realized that there was something out there for me bigger than what I was already doing. And this was where I started to build and hone my skills to get a lot better. Okay, now remember, Efemena at this time, at this point in time, was no longer in Nigeria. Okay, Efemena had traveled to Ireland and we'll come to talk about a bit of his own story. So while I was working with Sahara Group, I also built experience through projects. Okay, so working with Sahara was in the energy sector. I worked with FITC, which was in the financial services sector. But I knew that opportunities exist in the health sector. Opportunities exist in transportation. Opportunities exist in so many other areas. And the only way I could get experience in these sectors was to also work on projects. So I started working on so many projects. I got data online from Cargo, got data from our world in data, got data from so many platforms, and I was working on building personal projects on my own to improve my skills. 
Okay, now after doing this, of course, I added it to my portfolio. I had a portfolio of all the projects that I had built over time because I wanted to attract foreign companies. All right. And at this time, Efemena was already talking to me about contracts while he was in Ireland and also in the UK. Now, there were contracts. You don't need to work full time for these organizations. You work on a fixed term contract and you get to make a lot of money. So I got involved and I started to work on contracts for organization across the UK and also across Europe. And I was still in Nigeria, but I was earning in euros. Fantastic salary. I was Life was good at that time working in Nigeria, working for Sahara, of course, and also working on all these multiple contracts. So I got exposed to working for companies outside Nigeria at that particular point. Now, how did I transition into data science? I had worked on two BI projects and I realized that for me to make even more money, I needed to take my skill level to the next uh, stage or to the next level, if you will. So I realized that to make the extra box, I need to learn Python to give me access to more projects, okay? And this was about five years into my career, okay? So I had known how to use Excel. That was what I was using while in FITC, while in Sahara. I also knew how to use Power BI and SQL, and that did the job for me. But while working on personal projects, I also saw that to get access to more projects, more money, I needed to you know, improve my skills. And this came five years after. And this was where I decided to learn Python. So I learned Python. I learned machine learning, computer vision. And this was my entry into the world of data science. And I was transitioning from a data analyst into a data scientist. So I worked on more projects after learning Python. I worked on more projects for companies across the US and also in the UK on contracts. And of course, I saw the massive opportunity. Myself and the Femena, we saw that, look, there is massive opportunity for Africans and people of the Black community. Because everybody I knew at that time that traveled were going to do odd jobs, do menial jobs, do care jobs, Jobs that they really did not want to do. And here I was, I was not even outside the country. I was in Nigeria and I was working as a data analyst, as a data scientist for companies abroad. And that was how myself and Efemena decided that, look, let's help more people to get into the tech ecosystem. Okay, so let's build a platform that will serve as a springboard for people that, like, that were like us, Black people from the Black community, Africans across different regions, to also get access to these opportunities. And that was how Tenalytics came into being, okay? And I resigned from full-time employment in 2022, and I decided to move to the UK. I got a master's, which was a feel good for me, just a nice to have. I got a master's in big data science and technology. And I also got to work with Bell Run Group in the UK and also in the US. And this was where contracts, built working on projects, personal projects paves the way for me to getting access to more jobs outside the shores of Nigeria, okay? So at this time, I had moved to the UK. I had gotten to interact with so many other people. And of course, Tenalytics at this time has started to come into shape to help so many other Africans to get, get jobs within the tech ecosystem. So there was a lot of impact through Tenalytics because we had to put the word out there, guys, the opportunities are not just only in care. They're not just only in you working in the health sector. There are other opportunities that you have a career progression, you have career growth, and you can also do the same. This is how we have done it. You don't need to you know, reinvent the wheel. We'll show you what to do. We'll teach you the technical skills and also help you prepare because the interviewing process is a different ballgame entirely. When I worked with Bell Run, in the UK, when, during my interview, they asked me several questions, but when they told me to tell them about the company, and I started to tell them specific things about their organization that they were not even sure that they knew about you know, the organization themselves, they were really impressed about the level of detail that I gave to them during those interviews because I had prepared. 
And one of the things that recruiters in the UK, in the US want to see from you is that number one, you have the confidence. Number two, you know your stuff and you are confident about your skills. And number three, you have done your research. And these are very, very important points. So through 10 analytics, over the last um, three plus years, from 2020, when we started 10 analytics till date, we had helped over 2,000 people across different regions to land their very first jobs in tech. From data analytics to data science, to business analysis and so on and so forth. And why were we so successful? We were so successful at helping people transition because we had been there and we had done it. We saw where we had our lapses, where we made mistakes, and we know exactly what to do to help more people transition. We also partnered with so many other bodies, so many organizations to ensure that people could easily get access to these jobs and we could also create the necessary awareness. So we partnered with um, the Nigerian Student Society in Bradford um, to get the word out there for more people to get into tech. We also initiated scholarship programs for women in tech because at that time we also saw that just 25% of tech roles were held by women. So we had a scholarship to get more women into tech and it was an amazing successful one. And I'll share some stories with you on some of the ladies that got took advantage of this scholarship. And today they work with the NHS in the UK, they work with um, TELUS in Canada, they work with so many other organizations and they were successful in that. We've executed over seven data hackathons to foster a healthy competition because one of the things we also benefited from was participating in hackathons. So we also created the opportunity and avenue for other people to compete. And of course, we partnered with recruitment agencies in the UK, with, um, in, in Canada with Robert Half. In the UK, we partnered with Hayes, Conferry in the US to get opportunities out there to more people who can also get into the tech ecosystem. And this was this is myself, Efemena, and the president of the Nigerian Student Society in Bradford when we partnered. And this was last year, um, Independence Day, October 2023, where I was with the president of the Nigerian Student Society in Bradford, uh, where we had sealed the partnership and showing that more people can actually get opportunities in the UK. And we have been doing an amazing work afterwards all right so i've left the link for you to also interact with um, the scholarship we offered and the articles published by um, tech cabal about the scholarship and this has been my own journey a journey whereby i started from somebody who knew nothing within the tech ecosystem i did my very first project and i started to learn myself and Efemena, teaching each other learning served as accountability partners and eventually built a platform that has helped over 2,000 people over the last three plus years to also make the same transition just like we did. And that's been my story. It's an amazing story. And I don't imagine what else I would have done if I did not get into tech at that point in time. Okay, so if Emena is going to come to talk about his own story and how he was also able to transition. So some of the things I must, I must have missed out, I'm sure if you will talk about them. Okay. So if he, if you are there, please. Let's go. go Let's go. Um, I enjoyed myself. It was good reminiscing about the story, um, about how we started and uh, it was really good. Um, I think you did a great job, you know, balancing it out and all that. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead to you share my screen. Uh, we're taking off from there. Okay. All right. So, I can see all of you are just, I know you guys have enjoyed yourself. If you are enjoying yourself, guys, please put a one in the chat. I think Adiza did a fantastic job. It feels like I want to transition again. Adiza, can I transition again? <laughs> all right. I'm put a one in the time. <laughs> <laughs> I want to transition. I've transitioned, but I want to do it again. Can you imagine? <laughs> all right. All right. That's fantastic. All right. So just I'm just going to take the next probably 15, 20 minutes maximum, ridiculously, to talk about my own experience and how I was able to transition. And um, it's very interesting because one thing that we nobody knew where we we're going to. OK, we did, never knew we we're going to land in the tech space. We There was nothing like that back then, back in the days. OK, 
So um, I had my degree in economics, okay? That was the first thing out of school, okay? Even the economics, they forced me to read it, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I read economics, I did economics, and, you know, graduated and all that. And, um, you know, long story short, because there are so many stories in there, but long story short is, honestly speaking, I was not a career person. I never wanted a career, all right? I wanted to do business. I wanted to do something entirely different, something fun that would get me talking to different people, moving around and all that, all right? So, you know, I wanted to do that, but long story short was, you know, I eventually got a job as a management consultant. Adidas has done a fantastic job about our experience in FITC, all right? So working in FITC was a very good experience because there was a point for someone that never wanted to do anything career, that never wanted to have a career. I never, you yeah. know, I never thought of even having like, I never knew what a successful career would look like. Do you understand? So, you know, I got the job as a management consultant. That was where myself and Adesa met, okay? We started off as interns, not even as a full-time staff, started as intern, okay? We did our internship for like a year. Normally, they're supposed to, it, took, it takes about two years before you get confirmation. But on that one year, we were able to get our confirmation. So those are the things that, you know, diligence and work and all that. And we just wanted to, you know, give that the best. There's a popular saying that goes, whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. That's something that we live by. That's something that we try to achieve every single time. Whatever we try to do, we try to do it as, best as possible to keep us, you know, you know, in the mouths of people, in people's minds and all that. So basically that's our my experience. So, but I won't talk too much on FITC, okay? But in that experience, I got to interact with top management organizations, the top management team of different organizations. So I met up with the CEOs of several banks in Nigeria, several, you know, um, regulators, directors, you know, as a, you know, director, associate directors, you know, top management people. And funny thing that, you know, I found out from these guys, for someone that I like, remember that I never wanted to do any career, all right? So, I, you know, I started interacting with these people and it was very interesting. Some of them had two two in university. Some of them had, you know, some of them did not even go to university. Funny stories for CEOs, top CEOs, top management executives, for these banks in Nigeria back in the time when I was still working, as a consultant, you know, it was very interesting to see that my university degree, with the university degree I thought, you know, was relevant, okay? These guys that were leading these big corporations, big organizations, had a tutu, all right? Some of them are third class. Some of them did not even have university degree, all right? And it was interesting, okay? Well, I saw how they were able to achieve so much, okay? And, you know, that was the time I started saying, okay, do you know what? If, if I'm good at something, Okay, these guys are good at something. Hence the reason why they were able to climb their career ladder to get to where they are going to. So I said to myself, and myself and Adiza, we spoke. My, Adiza is my G, right from time. Do you understand? So everything I know, Adiza knows. Anything he knows, I know. So we share literally everything together. So we started talking amongst ourselves to say that, guy, bro, we need to be recognized for something. Even within the organization where we were, we need to be recognized for something. We need to stand tall. We need to be able to, anytime they need somebody, they need this first prof kind of professional, we need to be the person. And the only thing that could have achieved that for us was learning, was for us to learn. Okay? So you see the two of us here, we are added learners. We are always learning something, always learning something new every single day. All right? So at that point in time, being the fact that I, learned economic, I had economics in the, you know, my university degree, so I wanted to do accounting. I wanted to do finance. I wanted to go into finance. And you know, we're working with the majority of the banks in Nigeria back then, okay? So everything was finance, finance, finance. So I said, let me do finance. So I did a training program on financial modeling, all right? And in the process of learning financial modeling, <clears throat> I learned Excel, Microsoft Excel. So with that skill and learning, myself and Adidas are going to back to back learning and all that, we became very good. That's it. So I learned financial model. I was good in financial model, even though I was not a financial accountant. I can remember one of the training programs I had for one of the biggest banks, you know, one of the top banks in Nigeria. And all the people in the house, you know, when I did normal introductions, okay, please, you know, introduce yourself one after the other. And I found out that at least 40% of the class were chartered accountants. Okay. Senior manager, managers, you're right. And literally most of them were chartered accountants. And I was coming to teach financial modeling. I had no, <laughs> what is it? I had zero experience in finance, okay? I just learned financial modeling, all right? And I was, you know, I started training people, okay? 
So someone that had no child, I'm not a chartered accountant, okay? I've not worked in any finance, I've not worked as a financial analyst, okay? I was training financial, I, I was training chartered accountants, I was training people with wealth of experience in finance on how to build financial model, all right? And they were so humble, they were so excited. And I was like, okay, do you know what? I go back, talk about Deza, and you know, that's how we started saying, okay, do you know what? How can we build something around this? We started training people. All right, we recommended the organization that this I spoke about that told them that any training program on Excel, please put us on it. We'll train them. Do you understand? These are the things that we've done at our spare time, and this is what we will be able to achieve. All right. So that's we throwing ourselves into deep, difficult situations that we never thought we could even, you know, do anything. We couldn't amount to anything really. So we started training. It was honestly majority of the training we did for FITC, majority of them for free. Because they were paying a salary, so they, there was no need for us to, you know, get paid extra. So it wasn't they weren't paying us for it. So it was pro bono. Do you understand? Even though the organizations were paying, obviously, but we facilitating, we're not getting paid. So we started to, you know, branch out to see how can we get paid for these service that we're doing. So we started, you know, partnered with different educational technology firms in Nigeria and also in Europe. So you know, during that time, we're training people in Excel, Excel, Power BI, Excel, and Power BI. And we started a little bit of data data analytics consulting for different firms in Nigeria. Majority of the SMEs, small, medium enterprises, I wanted to, you know, start to use the data and all that. So it was small. It was small scale. Do you understand? It was small scale. We started very, very small. But that's the key thing. We just started. Okay. And, you know, after that, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to, to get a better job. Okay. And as a management consultant back in the days, I was earning good salary. We were earning good salaries. So every other job I was applying to was not giving me the salary I was looking for, the kind of salary I was looking for, okay? And uh, this was a time that data was not even very, it wasn't mainstream. So a lot of organizations did not see it as, you know, in demand. They didn't see the need for it. So it wasn't in Nigeria back in the days, there was no, you before you even get a role as a data analyst or a data scientist and they'll pay you like 500 k it was very, very difficult to be, get those kind of opportunities, okay? So in my mind, I was like, okay, do you know what? Let me travel. Let me relocate, all right? Let me go to a new country and see what, what is in, you know, what's in the what's in the opportunity there for me, all right? So I relocated to Ireland and got a master's in data analytics. And, you know, and guess what? I struggled to get a job, okay? I When I even relocated, thinking that this was better organized, you know, you know different um, environment, I will be able to get a job, all right? So I struggled to get a job after my master's program. I struggled. And guess what? Do you know the reason why I was struggling, okay? And thankfully to one recruiter I spoke to, okay? So I was applying for jobs. I was getting calls. People were calling, all right? A lot of recruiters were calling. A lot of employers were calling. And they were, you know, after every conversation first level and if I, maybe I, maybe if i got to second level in any of the interviews maybe it would be like one or two all right after calling you know after you know different interviews over 10 15 20 interviews every week or every other week do you understand so i wasn't getting any positive results so there was this conversation i was having the recruiter recruiter just called me oh i saw your cv you have good experience can we talk okay and that was how you know i started talking to the recruiter and I told the recruiter that, oh, I have a master's in data analytics. I kept, you know, hammering the fact that I had a master's degree. And this guy was saying that. And I kept hammering the fact that I had a master's in data analytics along the line also, you know, I want to start with the organization. I wanted to grow with the organization. Now, this, this company, this recruiter was not looking at me like, I don't understand. On your CV, I see you have experience. So why do you want to start and grow? With this organization when you already have experience but you know coming from nigeria all right if you tell any recruiter or any hr professional that oh i want to grow with the organization i want to start from the bottom and grow my way to the top you know hr will see that as somebody that wants to stay within the organization but in ireland recruiters didn't see it that way recruiters saw it as though you were an imposter okay all right. They saw it as though I was an imposter. And that's the reason why I said that I counter with that, you know, with that recruiter. Because other recruiters would just, you know, listen to me and never call me back. Okay. But this recruiter now, you know, stopped me and said that, if you men, you have experience. 
you have experience. So why are you downplaying your experience and you know, telling me that you have a master's or telling me that you have this, telling me you have you, know, you want to start with the organization and grow with the organization? All right. So, you know, my mindset at that point in time was basically was was factored to what I was doing in Nigeria. Okay. I want to grow with the organization. I want to start from the bottom, learn the ropes, and climb the ladder. Do you understand? So everybody thought I was an imposter. Yeah. All right. Thinking I was an imposter that this guy has no experience and is just trying to find his way into an organization. So even though this recruiter that gave me this, that gave me this particular um, how would I put it, this um advice, okay? All right, you could have given me this advice to tell me to stop downplaying my experience, all right, and focus on my experience rather than the master's program that I had at that point in time. So, you know, that's when I started, you know, I turned around, started, you know, using my experience. And I'll tell you that in just a matter of one month, just one month of application after this encounter, I got a job, okay? I got a job with one of the largest logistics firms in Europe, all right, which is DPD. So if you're in Ireland, you're in the UK, you're anywhere in Europe, you will know of DPD, okay? So I got a job as a business intelligence analyst with DPD. At this particular role, this is where I now go exposed to using data on a very large scale, okay, for large logistics, supply chain, and all that, okay? So while working at DPD, <clears throat> this is why we tell our people, you know, don't, never stop learning. Never stop learning. So even as that today, today that I feel I have, you know, good experience, people will see my, you know, my LinkedIn or my experience and say that, oh, this guy has good experience. I still learn every single day. Okay. So while I was working as a business intelligence analyst, I didn't stop there. All right. That was not the end point for me. I didn't say that, oh, I've got the job that I wanted. Let me stop. Let me relax. I kept on building projects. I kept on learning and I kept on building pro projects. As I said, I posted it online on LinkedIn. So back in the days, you, if you go to my LinkedIn, you go to my uh, my post, you will see I used to post a lot of projects, machine learning projects, computer vision projects, you know, and so on and so forth, pro projects in NLP and all that. So I would do a project, you know, write on it, you know, post it on my LinkedIn, okay? So from that particular, from that particular post I used to do, okay? I, I, while I was still working with DPA, with DPA in Ireland, I got a job as a data scientist. That was the first one. It was a six month contract. So I worked as a data scientist with Zadite. Okay. Zadite is a social gaming company. So basically, they are providing a platform, okay, for social gaming. So if you want to, you know, you're playing, you're playing Call of Duty, you know, most of the time you're playing with people on the internet. Okay. All right. You're playing with people online. So basically, they're building a platform to aid social gaming. All right, where you can actually meet up with people of like mind, like characteristics, and so on and so forth. So for as a data scientist with these people, I built a customer segmentation model for them. Okay. All right. So also building projects and working in building in public and posting it online and all that. I also got a job with Vastmind, okay, another contract position where I worked as a computer vision engineer. All right. So bear in mind that this is something that I used to work as a management consultant. This is not someone that studied com computer science in university, okay? This is not somebody. So I don't have any, from all this conversation that we're talking about, there is nothing about certificates. There is not, nothing about, you know, um, degree or anything. This is year on experience, you know, learning and building, you understand, in public, all right? So while I was still working at DPD, obviously, like I said, always pushing myself to do better. I got a job with um, Dell, all right? Dell Computers, okay? And it was a supply chain analyst role, which was paying significantly higher than what I was being paid at DPD. Okay. So I obviously it was the right thing to do. Resign. Okay. All right. Or more, I don't get better offer. Or more guys that are in DPD. I'm done, you know, moving on to the next role. All right. Guess what? DPD gave me a better offer. Okay. To say that we're not going to accept your resignation offer. Okay. You're going to, we're going to give you what these people are offering and they added additional perks okay they gave me additional perks okay to you know, okay you're going to get this you're going to get that i'm going to list it here okay so they gave me the same offer they gave me and gave me some perks additional perks to ensure that i don't take the offer from dell i've never happened to me before in my life okay obviously i was excited like oh so you know i can actually get a better offer 
all right, and use that as leverage. Okay, no problem. But you know the funny thing here, when you're applying for jobs, you're always applying for several jobs. You, sometimes you don't even remember that you're applying for a job until they send you an interview invite or somebody calls you, all right? So that was the case for me. So while I was still working with DPD, I was doing a lot of applications, you know, applying for different jobs, senior roles and all that. But eventually another role came in. Just two months down the line, I got another job as a global business systems analyst with Teleflex. All right. So Teleflex obviously was is a massive organization, one of the largest medical technology firms in the world. Okay. Obviously, it was a sweet offer, very sweet offer. Guess what? I went back to my boss back then at DPD to tell him that, oh, I've got another offer, okay? And uh, I would like to take the offer. I would like to resign. You know, he said, he made the ask for the salary. I told him the salary. He said, <laughs> he called me Effie, okay? He called me Effie, E F E F F Y, okay? That's the way they pronounce my name. Instead of Ifimena, they called me Effie. So it was like, Effie, it's not every time you get a better offer that are going to increase your salary. Do you understand? So obviously from that conversation, I knew that they were not going to do anything. So eventually I had to resign and I took up the role, which was significantly higher. Now, bear in mind that this is just in a matter of what? Eight months, not two years, not three years. All these that I'm talking about, it's just in a matter of, it's within a year, all this happened. All right? Just within a year. All right? So global business systems analyst, and I would say, in my experience so far, this has been the organization I stayed with the longest, okay? Telefax is a wonderful place to work. I did, I, while I was working there, it was fully remote. I never had to go to the office. I never entered into the office once, okay? But, you know, while I was working in Teleflex, I, started, I got a wind of what contract rules are. So let me show you, let me just show you, because of people on the call. So, you know, we have some people that, you know, when they say tech, you know, having money in tech or having experience in tech i'm going to show you something real quick all right so for the guys in the uk and also in canada i'm just going to all right um okay i'm just going to show you okay read or code uk all right so let's take a look at let's say the role of a data analyst it could be the same thing as a data or a business analyst okay okay and I'm just going to search. I'm just going to show you what contact rules entails so you understand what we're talking about. So once you go to any website, any job board, just search for contracts, okay? Search for the role and click on contract. It's going to give you all the contract position that you can get. So you see, this is a data analyst position. This is 600 to 650 pounds per day. Not per month, not per year, not per annum, okay? Per day, okay? Same thing, data migration analyst. This is 480 to 550 pounds per day. Okay. So these are contract roles. Okay. So for people that don't know, so people are thinking that people are thinking that, oh, I will, I'm looking for a salary within 25 to 40K. You can actually get contract position also. All right. Obviously, you can start from somewhere and work your way to a contract. You can see me. I did not start contracts from the first time. Okay. I built my way, I worked my way into contracts. Okay. So some of these roles for contract position, from my experience, you need to eat the ground running. There's no training wheels. For as a beginner, all right, you might struggle for contract roles. And that's the reason why there are other opportunities, full-time opportunities and all that, where you can actually build your experience, build your confidence, and then you can start applying for contracts. But you can also just apply for contracts and get it, all right? And that is what exactly I did. I found my way around it. So you see, there are quite a number of and it's not just data analytics. It's not just data science. It's also business analyst. It could be a business analyst, all right? And it's the same process, okay? And the same thing with data engineering. I can't do everything at the same time, all right? You can see this is a cyber business analyst, 500 to 550. Uh, this is a contract with salaried, okay? So usually I go for the ones that are per day, that are paid on a daily basis, 500 to 550. And the same thing with data engineering and every single role that you have in there. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is a contract position. And this is what myself and Adiza got into to set up. Do you know what? We can actually earn significantly more than what the regular, you know, full-time role would entail. So you see data engineer 500 per day, data engineer 450 to 550. Azure data engineer, this is 550 to 575, 275 to 295. So you could start from somewhere. Okay. 
my first, very first contract was £250 per day. That was the first contract I did, and I got £250 just for me to understand how it worked. Okay. And from there, you know, and that's how I started just, you know, demanding more, demanding more till I got to where I am at this point in time. So basically, I got to win Ireland also. If you're in Ireland, there are contract jobs in, in Ireland. If you're in the UK, there are contract jobs in the UK. If you're in the US, there are contract jobs in the US. If you're in Canada, there are contract jobs in Canada. Okay, so anywhere you are, guys, there are contract jobs, especially in those countries of the world. Okay, so all you need to do is just look for the keyword. All right, all right. So I'm just going to take out anything, find jobs, and just look for job type. You see, this is um, sorry, sorry, permanent. Okay, this is not coming out. Sorry, but basically, there are contract rules. It's just the way I searched for it. And they're all contractors everywhere, okay? So essentially, that's what I got a win off and decided that, okay, do you know what? There's no need for me to even work in full-time employment, okay? Okay, and you're not paying, all right, you're required to work a certain number of hours. Sometimes you will work more than those hours and you don't get paid for those extra hours that you work. Well, a contract position doesn't work that way, okay? Even though sometimes your project might be difficult and you have to take in more hours, but you're usually compensated at the end of the day. All right. So basically, relocated from Ireland to the UK, all right? I did that for like, worked in the UK for a while, okay? And uh, was majorly contracts I was doing in the UK while I relocated from Ireland to the UK. And I was working with large corporations, okay? Um, some of them I can't disclose because some because of the contracts that I signed with them. Some of them I can disclose, I can disclose, but they're all on my LinkedIn. The ones I can disclose are all on my LinkedIn, okay? So... Data analytics, data science, and that's what I do. You know, transformation projects, data science, data analytics, adoption projects, data science and transformation projects, and so on. So that's what I did in the UK, UK all right? Also got some contracts also in the US, in which I worked on, and that's myself and days are working on all these projects together. And now I'm in Canada, okay? Also to do this work, also do the same thing. More contract jobs, work more contract jobs, make more money, earn a good living, and that's basically it. But you see how we started. The key thing is starts. All right. And I did say something which I would re that resonates with me every single day. Okay. The question is, if I wasn't doing what I am doing at this point in time, what else would I be doing? All right. You need to ask yourself now that honest question. Okay. Are you earning as much as you think you would earn? Okay. Are you earning as much as what we just looked at today? We would also look at average salaries so you see exactly where you fall in. All right, in terms of salary scale, you can actually make when they say there's money in tech, it's not a joke. It's not like you have to work with the likes of Netflix or you have to work with the likes of, you know, the fan company, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and the rest of them, Google and the rest. Okay, you don't have to work with Van for you to make money. All right, you got at this outside of working, you know, for four companies simultaneously. There was a time the same thing, working for three different companies in the UK simultaneously, any per day for each of these companies. All right. Nobody needs to tell you the math. Nobody needs to tell you the math of it. Okay. I don't need to spend it out. But you know deep down that you can actually make earn significantly higher than you're earning at this point in time. So to wrap it up on my own end, three things that helped me achieve what I was achieving. Okay. That we that helps myself and Adiza so far is learning. Learning. Now, what good thing about me and what about why we started analytics is to create a structure around the learning the learning process, structure. A lot of people want to get started and they want to go on YouTube to learn. I will tell you, it will take you years for you. The materials are there, but it will take you years for you to understand, to conceptualize, okay? And even you leverage those knowledge in getting you your job. So that's why we created analytics to get you started, the learning process, make it as easy and as straightforward as possible to get you started. Not for you to become an expert, okay? For you to get started, for you to get a job, for you to get into the industry and build your way up. Just the same way we started. All right. Now, do we need afraid? Okay. So all the decisions that you see that I was making, moving to Ireland, starting Ireland, moving on Ireland, getting this, getting that, moving, and all that, okay, to where I am at this point in time, now in Canada. All right. Do we need afraid? I'm afraid. Well, regardless, I'm gonna do it. Okay, and I'll try it. Let me try it out. Okay, worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. I revert back to the plan and I continue again. Okay, so there are obviously I made so many mistakes also, which are not listed here. All right, probably we'll have another session about mistakes. Okay, and maybe people will learn from that also. But the key thing is to do it afraid. 
All right, learn, keep learning, be an added learner, okay? Then do it afraid, regardless of whatever people would say, whatever whatever people would do, people would always talk, all right? But do it afraid. When I was going, when myself, when I was going to do my master's, okay, in data analytics, I can remember my father saying, which one is data analytics again? Do you understand? Which one is data analytics? Go and do your master's in international business, what people are familiar with. Even, if, you know, people said the same thing. Even people within the organization I worked with back in the days said the same thing, which one is data analytics. Go and do your know, business in you know, masters in some other program that we are fam that people are familiar with, all right? By doing data analytics. And, you know, people would always talk, but the key thing is for you to do it afraid, all right? And the next thing is when it works, rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Keep doing it. It works. Don't change anything. Rinse and repeat. So it worked for me in Ireland. It worked well for me in Ireland. What did I do? I moved to the UK. Did what? Did the same thing. Even did it better. Okay? Because I understood it already. What am I doing now? I'm in Canada to repeat the same thing. All right? Rinse and repeat. If it works, rinse and repeat. So keep learning. Do it afraid. And if it works, rinse and repeat. And do it very well. That's the key thing you need to understand. So one, so this is where I'm going to just draw the curtain on my own side, and I'll still be coming back. But one thing you guys should have at the back of your mind is we don't have any certificates, okay? We don't have any certification. You don't hear anything about certification until you start it. You can look at all the job roles that I did that. You can go online and do the same thing. Now, if you see any certification for any of these career paths we're going to be talking about today, you send me a message, okay? All right, if it's a key criteria for you to get that job, send me a message. Nothing about certification, nothing about chasing something. All right, the key thing we're chasing is that experience, getting a job, getting better pay. All right, so rather than you chasing certification, chase money, chase, certif uh, chase um, better career, chase better experience, and I'll tell you for free, you're going to have a wonderful time, have a wonderful career at that also. So this is why I'm going to try the um, try, draw the cut here on my side, and I'll hand over back to Deza for him to continue from there. I hope you guys had a good time, anyways. All right, cheers, guys. Yeah, thanks for that, um, Ify. Absolutely fantastic um, session. Like you said, it might be very interesting to have a session separately talking about <laughs> the challenges and perhaps the mistakes we made. But the beauty about the whole thing is all the mistakes we've ever made, you are not going to make those mistakes again because you now have a structured learning approach. And I'll just quickly talk about some lessons, the key lessons um, from myself and Femena that you can learn from our journey. Okay, And for those of you that would love to get started, how can you learn from our journey? And that would help you, you know, chart your own path eventually. And the very first thing is we never for once chase up till today. I have zero certificates. Same with Femena, zero, no certificates at all. And I always tell people that want to get into the tech ecosystem, speaking from the point of experience, number one, and also speaking from the point of um, having mentored so many people to get jobs. When you chase certificates, you are putting the cart before the horse. You are likely not going to move anywhere. Recruiters don't care about your degree. They don't care about your master's. They don't care about your certificates. What they care about is the skill. You have the skill to get the job done when they hire you. They don't want you to come into the organization and learn and grow with them, like if you said, at their own expense. Can you get the job done when you get when they give the job to you? So we never chase certificates. We chase the skills and we focused on getting better and honing our skills. The second lesson I think you can learn from this is we never waited for opportunities to fall on our laps. We were dedicated to the journey, all right? After everything we learned, we found ways to practice it. It was either we worked on personal projects or we volunteered for free, no extra pay, to get something done, to put our hands on something and get some practical experience. Sometimes, sometimes the practical experience came from working on personal projects, but we never waited for anybody to give us the opportunities. We went for the opportunity, okay? Adesa and Femena did not wait to have all the skills in the world before we applied to jobs, okay? And this goes out to the ladies. The ladies always want to wait until they have 
100% of the requirements, you meet 100% of the requirements before you go ahead and apply. Please don't do that, okay? And we always advise this to people. We applied to jobs that we met 60 to 70%, and that was how we got opportunities. Because all you need is that very first opportunity to put yourselves in front of a recruiter or a hiring manager, and then you can convince them that you are the right person for that job. So don't wait until you have all the skills, because that would never happen. If I waited to you know, find out if I needed MongoDB, I would, I would, perhaps I would never be where I am today. I didn't know what MongoDB was. I saw it on the requirements, but I ignored it, and I went ahead to apply, and here I am today, okay? Another learning point is myself personally. For some people, like it also stems from the third learning point. You always want to learn everything, which is practically impossible to do. Learning is never a destination. It's always continuous. Even till today, I still learn. All right? And bear in mind that I never learned Python until five years after working as a data analyst. That was when I decided to pick up Python. I never knew Python. Okay? But for some people, you want to learn every single thing and you waste a lot of time. People that don't really have as much skills as you have, they've gotten started. The most important thing is getting started. And once you have that first job, you get into the space. Subsequent jobs becomes very, very easy. So these are the key learning points I'll say you can take from my journey and also a feminist journey if you ever want to get into tech. So this is practical experience from what we have done and what we have helped so many other people to do over the last few years, okay? So now we're going to talk about some career path. And this is where you ask yourself the question, if I want to transition, tech is very broad, okay? If it works as a business systems analyst, data scientist, data engineer, BI engineer, data analyst, data scientist. I've worked as a data analyst, as a data scientist, as a business data analyst as well. Now, transitioning into a new career path in 2024, you can't do that blindly. You need to know the specific areas to follow. So where are the jobs? Where will the opportunities be in the next five to 10 years? If I get into a career path today, how relevant will my job be in the next few years? It's important that you take note of this. And what we have done as a data company is to take this data, we did some analysis to see where the opportunities have been, which particular roles are recruiters hiring for, and which roles will be relevant. And we validate it using reports like the Future of Jobs reports by the World Economic Forum. And some of the roles you'd see that are very high in demand, you'd see AI, at the left-hand side, you have the jobs that would grow, the growing jobs. That's what you have at the left-hand side. And at the right-hand side over here, you have the jobs that are declining. So jobs that will decline in the next five years, you have them at the right-hand side. So I've kept the link to these reports, and it's good for you to look at it, for those of you that want to transition. And this also forms the basis, including the analysis that we do in-house to inform the type of programs that we offer at Ten Analytics, because it's it's important that every single career path you decide to go for, the demand is there and you can get a job irrespective of where you are. So AI engineering, business intelligence analyst, information security analyst, which also of course involves cyber security. Okay, I hope I'm sharing my screen. Yes, I am. And of course, you also have career paths like the data analyst and the data scientist. And these are career paths that, that would always exist and always be in demand, data analyst and data scientist. And this is simply because of the amount and the quantum of data and the veracity, the speed at which this data is generated. You need, organizations need data analysts and data scientists to help them handle that data, analyze the data, and make sense of the data. And of course, you have data engineers, and you have data architects, you have project managers. These are roles that are growing demand. And for project managers, 
focused on the tech ecosystem. You have the Scrum Masters. So the Scrum Masters are associated to project management, leveraging the agile methodology in delivering projects, usually within the tech ecosystem, okay? So some of these roles, you need to dive a little bit deeper into them and see the roles that are more specific towards the tech ecosystem. And of course, you have the financial analyst as well. And these are roles, like I said, that are going, going to grow in demand, meaning that there are opportunities for them today. And for people who will be looking at going into accounting in 2024, accounting is on the decline. The accounting and the auditing role would decline in the next few years. Okay, and for anybody who is an accountant today, you can't just remain the conventional accountant. You need to pivot into something that has a little bit of analytics, like the financial analyst, all right? You need to look at those type of roles, complementing your accounting skills with other skills in the tech ecosystem. And these are roles that will be in high demand. And with that, we came up with eight different career paths. The business analysis role, the data analytics, financial analytics, the HR analytics, full stack data science, Scrum Master, Data Engineering, and Cyber Security. And these are roles across the globe and the major economies that if you find yourself in any of these roles, you have career paths that are in high demand. And all you need to do is have the right skills to compete for these roles when you get into those countries. And I'm going to share some success stories with you for people who have no experience right they came into 10 analytics they learned the skills and while they were still learning even before they completed the program they got jobs okay they got jobs as business analysts data analysts with sponsorship some of them working as care workers getting jobs as business analysts in canada in the uk in the us and people would ask how did they gain the experience and i'll talk about that when we get there okay and for roles like the business analysis role, it's also important that when you transition in, into any of these eight career paths, you want to be sure that the remuneration is also great. So I'm not moving into a career path whereby the salary are very are bad and I really can't make a headway for myself. It doesn't cover my bills. I don't have savings. I can't make investments. And like Femena said, and I said earlier, getting into tech was the best decisions that we ever took. And as business analysts in the UK, you earn on the average per annum about 52,000 52, pounds. In Canada, about 74,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, over 85,000 US dollars. And in as a financial analyst in the UK, over 51,000 pounds per annum. In Canada, about 70,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, over 74,000 US dollars. And of course, as a data analyst in the UK, over 40,000 um, pounds in Canada, over 64,000 Canadian dollars, and in the US, 72,000 US dollars per annum on the average. As HR analysts, 32,500 pounds per annum in the UK, in Canada, 71,000 Canadian dollars, and in the US, 62,000 US dollars. And for the dates, for the full stack data science scientists, you are earning about 55,000 pounds per annum. In Canada, 94,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, amazing six figures, 121,000 US dollars. Data engineer, one of the highest paying roles you'd find out there. In the UK, 65,000 pounds per annum. In Canada, six figures, 102,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, 134,000 US dollars. Scrum master, another fantastic career path that gives you amazing salaries within the tech ecosystem. One of the fastest, fastest ways you can get into tech is through the Scrum Master role. And in the UK, you're looking at 52,000 pounds per annum. In Canada, over 74,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, over 85,000 US dollars. And cybersecurity, another very high paying career path. In the UK, 57,000 pounds per annum on the average. In Canada, six figures, 140,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, another six figures, 105,000 US 
dollars. So the salaries are amazing for these roles. So you would ask the question, do people, do you have people who have gone through analytics and they've been able to achieve success? They've been able to get jobs without experience, without any certification, doing the same things that Deza and Femena has done and so many other industry experts that you work with at analytics. So it always seems impossible until it is actually done. You see people that have done it and there are so many of them, all right? For, we have Tony, Tony who works, she joined analytics and within a month after joining, she landed a job with the NHS in the UK as a benefits analyst after completing our data analytics program. And that's Tony's story. So people would ask the question, how did Tony get a job one month into the program? And it's very simple. One of the first things that you need to do when trying to transition, especially if you're in the UK, if you're in Canada, you want to show the recruiters that you are not new into this. You have done it before. And that's why a portfolio becomes very, very important. You've done this before, you're not new to this. And you tailor your CV, your past experience to have a flavor of that new career path you are trying to move into. So if you present yourself to a recruiter that you've just learned data analytics in the last three months, nobody would hire you, all right? So you tailor your CV to showcase that you have worked as a data analyst, and this is you having three, four, five years experience, depending on the number of years of experience that you have. Those past experience having a flavor of data analytics embedded in it. So even if you are a teacher, you were a teacher, but you used Excel to do some tasks. You use Power BI to build some dashboards to visualize your students' scores, and so on and so forth. You must tailor your CV to show and have a flavor of the new career path you're trying to move into. And one of the things we also do at Analytics, we, we don't wait for you to complete the program before you start to apply to jobs. No, the moment you are done with Excel, you start to apply to jobs. Immediately you are done with Excel and that comes in one month after the program. So we're gonna to listen to Tony. So you get to hear for yourselves how Tony was also able to land this job. We have Oluwa Tosin, who got a job as a fraud analyst in the UK after completing our data analytics program as well. You have a look with me, who got a job as a business data analyst in Canada, Edmonton, Canada, after completing the data analytics. You have Benga, who got a job as a business data analyst in Poland. Benga was out of work for two years, couldn't get a job for two years in Poland, joined our program, completed the program, I got a job. We worked with him during his interviews, prepared him for his interviews, and eventually he was able to land a job. You have Abigail, who was a care worker in Canada, in Saskatchewan. Abigail joined our training program last year, got a job with the government of um, Alberta, and today works as a business analyst in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And this is Abigail. And the amazing stuff about Abigail is she moved from care work to business analysis to become a business analyst after completing our business analysis program. And today she leads two people. She has a direct, she has two direct reports, two people reporting to her. And this is Abigail who has never done business analysis before. And that's how we prepare you using our own past experience and you getting to work in a project based environment, because those are the projects that will give you the experience that you need. I saw somebody ask the question, how do I get two, three years experience? Project is what gives you the experience. When you work in a project-based environment, you learn by working on projects. So every single thing you learn, you are putting it into practice, solving real world projects. Okay, and that's how you learn with us at Analytics. You have Biola who got a job as a fin with one of the largest financial organizations um, in the UK. You have Shade who joined our data science program, works as a data scientist. You have Zaina who is in Nigeria, got a job as a data manager. You have Bernard who got a recommendation from Analytics and got a scholarship in Canada using the recommendation. You have Ikmat, full visa sponsorship in the UK working with the NHS. You have Sunday, 
you have Nathaniel and so many of them. You have Chica who joined our financial analytics program, got a job in the UK. You have Akin Tayo who is in Nigeria, got a job as a CFO after completing our financial analytics program. But I'm not going to bore you with all the different testimonials because of time, but I want you to listen to, I want you to listen to Tony and you receive the slide. So you have the opportunity to listen to every single fantastic individual that we have here. And you get to also hear their transition story. Okay. So I'm going to click on the link. Let's get to hear from Tony. So you hear from Tony yourself. You hear from Tony yourself and how she was able to make her own transition with us at Analytics. All right. So it's just a one minute video. Uh, just sit back, relax, enjoy um, Tony's story, and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay. Let me be sure you can hear the audio. All right. So sit back, relax, and listen to Tony. Hello, everyone. My name is Tony, and um, I recently got a job as a benefits analyst in the UK. I've come from a medical background as a pharmacist who is interested in, you know, breaking into tech. My first encounter with analytics was on LinkedIn. I joined one of their master class, just one master class where a femina spoke and it just took that masterclass to convince me. I joined in August and a month after I got a job. To be honest with you, every information skill uh, that I was able to apply to get that job, I owe it to Tenalytics. Tenalytics did a great job and is still doing a great job. They groom you and nurture you from the cradle to you become confident. So my advice for you most importantly is join be integrated into a platform that empowers you and allows you to easily get that first job right so that's Tony's story and there's so many other people Oluwa Tosin for example Olubemi Olubemi resigned um while working with one of the largest banks in Nigeria he was moving to Canada you know through the PR routes and he wanted to he came to us and said look Adesa, I don't want to, you know, work in a hotel as a cleaner. I don't want to do care work. I want to get a job that I have good career progression. And he joined our program at Analytics. I worked with him personally and some other professionals in-house. And Oluk Baby was able to get his first job in Canada as a business data analyst with the Lord Depot after completing his program with us. Recently, last that was November last year, about two months ago, he moved to a new role called Solutions Analyst, which is one of the largest insurance companies in Canada. And by doing this, by job switching, he's been able to move into a six-figure role in Canada. And that's amazing. When he got this job as well, we also wrote his reference for him to help him land and keep the job eventually. Okay, so these are amazing professionals. Ensure that you read their story. Also ensure that you listen to them and hear the amazing transition journey that they've had over time. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly walk you through. Okay, so I'm just going to move past all the testimonials. You can go through the story and I'm not going to bore you with too many testimonials. You can read those testimonials yourself, watch the videos. They are all on YouTube. And I'd like to ask, what is your desired career path going into 2024, all right? We've talked about eight different career paths. What if I'm not in the UK? You don't need to be in the UK to get a job, Oluchi. <laughs> you can be anywhere across the globe. But I think I talked about my story as well and how I was able to get a job while I was outside the UK in Nigeria, all right? So what is your desired career path? Just type it into the chat. Interested in data analytics, in cybersecurity, in Scrum Master, being a Scrum Master, data science, financial analytics, HR analytics. Just type it into the chat. Let's get to see. Geraldine says Scrum. Carrie says data analytics. Gloria says business analysis. I like the diversity. Joan says data analytics, cybersecurity, data engineering, business analysis. Fantastic. Fantastic, brilliant, data engineering, data engineering, data analytics, data science. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do very quickly is I'll walk you through the skills that you need to get into any of this career path, okay? The specific skills that you need to learn. When I talked about my story, I told you that I only knew Excel, Power BI, and SQL. Those were the three skills I had, and that was enough to get me started, okay? So the role has evolved over the years, and for some organizations, you'll see some certain type of skills that you also need to add to your toolkit to give you an unfair advantage. You must always have that unfair advantage. So as a business analyst, what key learning areas must you have? You must first of all learn data analytics skills as a business analyst. So you must learn Excel, you must learn Power BI, and you must learn SQL. And these are the data analytics skills because the modern business analyst today cannot just focus on only the business analysis skills. You need to have a flair for data analytics. And this gives you an advantage over your counterparts and other people you'll be competing with for that particular role. So once you've learned data analytics, Excel, Power BI, and SQL, you move into process mapping. All right, you must know how to use tools like Draw.io, Lucidchart, and other diagramming tools to create, to map out a process from end to end. How the process starts, all the other activities in between and how the process would end, you must have that skill. Project initiation, you're going to manage projects as a business analyst, you'll start up those projects and help organizations execute and deliver on projects. So you must understand project initiation. You must also understand Agile and Scrum for projects. Leveraging the Agile methodology, because as a business analyst, you work in the tech ecosystem where tech-related products would also be delivered. And you need to know how to leverage the Agile framework in delivering those projects, all right? You would learn the software development life cycle, how to plan out a software, how to design the software, how to build, how to implement, how to test, and so on. So the entire cycle of software development. As a business analyst, you need to know that. Requirement fundamentals. How do you gather requirements from organizations? How do you ensure that the project you are deploying all right, meets the requirements of the organization and to solve that particular problem? So asking the right type of questions through elicitation, also organizing the right type of workshops, the meetings that would help you gather those requirements. As a business analyst, you must know how to do that. So you learn elicitation as well. Stakeholder analysis and engagement, and of course, chat GPT for analytics. So these are the skills that you need to learn as a business analyst. And how long does it take? Four months for you to learn to become a business analyst two months project-based classes, and then another two months on a real-life project, working as an intern, free internship for two months. And the internship is where you would work with other stakeholders. We would work with a Scrum Master, you would work with a software developer, a web developer, and you would you'd project manage the building of a web application to solve a problem for a company. So when you get into, an, into a room where you're being interviewed, you have a project to talk about. And remember, you'd have worked on other projects during your two months, because your classes are project-based, okay? So you'd work for two months in class, learning the concept, applying them on projects. And then when you are done with your classes, you have another two months managing a web application project. And that gives you the understanding of a business analyst practically. So recruiters can see through the fact that you don't have a skill or you only know this skill in theory. And I've seen so many professionals, they have the paper, they have the certification, but do the job, they don't know how to do the job. I've interacted with so many business analysts. They've come to us and there's, I've been trying to get a job, but I can't land a job. I'm in Canada, I'm in the UK. And now there's somebody who is also on our slide. He was out of job since February, couldn't get a job. He came to us and I looked at his CV. This first part was missing. And this was all he needed to add to his CV. 
for him to get a job today in the UK working as a business data analyst. So these are the skills you need to learn to become a business analyst. So I'm going to move to data analytics because I'm also very conscious of time. Walk you through this very quickly. And I would advise you that make a note and take a screenshot of the skills. So you have an idea of what you need to know to transition into any of these roles. And as a data analyst, the first thing you need to learn is problem solving. I've worked as a data analyst for close to a decade. All the experience across all the different companies I've worked for, myself and Femena and other industry experts, we have curated those experience into case studies. And those are the case studies that you would be working on when in class. So the same experience we have you know, executed, we've worked on those projects, you would also be experiencing the same level of projects. And that's what we call project-based learning, experiential learning, learning through experience and putting your hands on practical scenarios. Once you understand problem solving, knowing how to get to the root cause of problems, identifying problems, writing adequate problem statements, knowing how to break problems into multiple parts using techniques like the, like the mckinsey Missy model that helps you break problems into multiple parts so you can solve those multiple parts and invariably solving the entire problem at the end of the day. Knowing the type of techniques to use when solving a problem that is data related, knowing the right type of data analytics framework to deploy when solving a problem, knowing if you have the type of data that you need to solve the problem, all of these things you learn during problem solving. And then you move into Excel, the almighty Excel. Myself and Femena started our journey with Excel and so many of you who wants to become data analysts would start your journey from Excel. So people start from learning other things. And I tell you for a fact that it's equivalent to you building a house and you are starting from the roof rather than starting from the foundation. Excel gives you that foundation into data analytics. After that, you move into SQL, structured query language. And this is the language that helps you interact with databases because organizations would store their data in a database. How do you access the database? How do you interact with the data in the database? How do you extract data from the database? SQL is a language that would help you do that. And then you move into Power BI. Power BI came a lot later during my own you know, transition journey, say with Femena, because we saw the power that Power BI had in terms of data visualization and doing some things that Excel cannot do, all right? And Power BI would give you that end-to-end -end automation of your analysis and also reporting. So one of the things I did when I was working with Sahara for four different companies, we built our analysis using Power BI, okay? And I created reports in the form of applications and those reports were scheduled to go out to the owners of the business who had Power BI installed on their mobile phones. So every Monday morning, they receive the reports for the previous week and they're able to see what happened and they can ask questions, take decisions based on the analysis we had done. That's what Power BI can give to you. You can do that, publish your reports, and anybody can view your reports on the web or using the Power BI application for mobile, okay? Tableau as well gives you that amazing capability to build amazing you know, data visualizations. The, it works a whole lot like Power BI. And the advantage of you learning Tableau as a data analyst is it opens up different avenues for you to apply to more jobs. So your job application becomes a lot broader because some organizations would want you to have Power BI, while some would have a preference for Tableau. So if you have Power BI and Tableau as a data analyst, you can apply to more jobs. And then you'd learn data storytelling. And this is you explaining and telling a story from the analysis you've done so that the stakeholders can take the type of decisions that they need to take. Chat GPT for analytics, you can't run away from that today. Organizations are looking for professionals that have the skills to write the right type of prompts to generate the right type of results. And it's called prompt engineering. So you are going to learn all of this. 
in the data analytics program and Microsoft Fabric for Analytics, which is a new platform that Microsoft launched last year. Microsoft Fabric has the capacity to, you can build your Power BI reports in Fabric, you can create databases, data lakes, and I can be somewhere in Manchester in the UK, you can be somewhere in Michigan in the US, and we can work on the same data that I have built in data lake to keep the data inside. I can work on that data building a Power BI report. You can work on the data by um, using writing SQL queries and so on and so forth. So it gives you that collaboration. And why is it important for you to learn this? It gives you the opportunity for organizations to see you as somebody that has a certain skill set that is not common and is not popular. So these are the eight key learning areas for data analytics today. How did I start? I started with only Excel, Power BI, and SQL, just three, and this was enough. And most of the time, you'd also see that you have learned eight skills. And when you're applying to jobs, they don't require all eight. They require maybe three, or maybe four, or maybe five. You'd have to find a data analytics role that would require all the eight. What is important for you to have all these skills because it makes you a more robust data analyst. And of course, the learning timeline is for four months, three months project-based classes. So some of the projects I worked on during my career, of course, we have modified the data, we've codified the data as well. So you cannot directly link any company to that particular data set. We've changed things around. So you get to work on similar projects and you experience the same things I have experienced. And by doing that, you are building a portfolio that will contain projects that you can talk about during interviews. And you also get to work on an internship. One month free internship when you're done with your learning. And the internship is where you get to collaborate with data scientists and other professionals to get problems solved. So you gain cross-functional experience working in a diverse team, which is one key requirement that you find in job applications, okay? Let's move into the HR analytics role. A HR analyst is simply that person that is a data analyst, but focuses on people-related data, okay? So first of all, you'd learn all the data analytics skills, all right, you'd learn data analytics skills as a HR analytics professional, problem solving, Excel, Power BI, and SQL. You start with that, and then you move into HR analytics and performance evaluation, knowing the type of metrics to use to analyze the performance of that organization, both the people with relation to the organization, all right? You'd also understand the different metrics across different HR cycles, talent management, absenteeism, attrition, and so on and so forth. You go into HR analysis and dashboarding, how to build amazing dashboards using tools like Power BI as a HR analyst. You collaborate and automate your reports because as a HR professional, you will have to show reports on a daily or continuous basis. So if it's a weekly report or monthly report, how do you ensure that the reports is automated and it keeps on going on and on without you creating it from scratch every single time. You'd learn how to build your case and create action. And of course, learn chat GPT as well for analytics. And how long does it take you to learn to become a HR analyst? First of all, you don't need any experience in HR, all right? You don't need any experience in HR. I've worked as a HR analytics consultant on some of the projects I did for an organization in the US. And I've never worked in HR before. I don't have any HR training. However, all the analysis you need to do in your HR analytics journey, you would learn them during the program, okay? You would learn the different metrics. How do you measure attrition? How do you understand what's the difference between turnover and attrition? What is talent management? What's talent sourcing analysis? You'd learn all these things during the program, all right? So you need zero experience and zero knowledge in HR to be a part of this program. And it takes you four months, just like the data analytics program as well. Three months project-based classes and one month internship. 
the internship I cannot overemphasize is one of the most important aspects of your training because that's where you get to work on cases that would involve other people. So it is collaborative and that's the way you work in the real world. You don't work in isolation or work alone. You work in teams. So as a HR analyst, you're going to work with a data analyst, with a data scientist, with a data engineer, and so on and so forth, All right? And this is what you need to become a HR analyst. And we move to the financial analytics professional. And as a financial analytics professional, you are simply a data analyst who has the capabilities to analyze financial related data. So the financial analytics program is a combination of data analytics, also investment banking, and corporate finance. All right? The same way you don't need any experience to get into this particular area, right? You first of all learn data analytics skills, problem solving, Excel, Power BI, and SQL, structured query language. You start with that, and then you move into accounting fundamentals. And this is the language of business. So even if you have never done accounting before, you've been learning this from scratch. And if you're an accountant, accounting and audit, and, and the accountant and the auditor role are roles that will decline in demand in the next five years. I showed you that. It's on the World Economic Forum Future of Jobs reports. Go read the reports and you'll see it yourself. But the accountant, or the auditor that has analytic skills embedded to your core skills as an accountant, you remain relevant. And of course, one of the roles that will grow in demand is the financial analyst role. It's also on the World Economic Forum, jobs that will grow in demand, okay? So how do you learn to become a financial analyst and apply to jobs across the globe? Once you've learned your data skills, Okay, you now move into accounting fundamentals, financial analysis, using different ratios, knowing how to analyze different ratios to measure the business performance, financial modeling, creating models, building models from scratch for real companies that exist and for companies that don't exist, for startups. The base case, the best case, the worst case, you create all those models to determine and show what the company would look like based on different scenarios, okay? You'd learn valuation, you'd learn sensitivity and scenario analysis, and then chat GPT for analytics. And how long does it take you to become a financial analyst? For four months, three months projects-based classes, and one month internship, similar to the HR, similar to data analytics. And this is what you need to become a financial analytics professional, all right? Now let's move to the data scientist. So I told you about the fact that I moved from um, data analytics to data science. And what did I tell you that I learned when I moved? I learned Python, machine learning. So that was what helped me move from data, from being a data analyst to a data scientist. And as a full stack data science, you are bringing everything full circle. Okay, you are bringing your Excel skills, you are bringing your Tableau skills, and you also start with statistics because this is where the data science journey starts from, statistics. Statistics is the foundation and machine learning, predictive analytics is hinged on statistics. So you start with statistics, understanding the basics, the fundamentals of statistics and how it drives the data science as a role itself. You also learn how to forecast and predictive analytics with Excel. So this time around, you are taking your Excel skills to another level to help to predict what would happen in the future, to forecast and see into the future. So you take data and use Excel to determine what will happen in the future based on what has happened in the past, given the data that you have. You'd also learn Tableau for data analytics, to visualize, create dashboards, to showcase what has happened in the company and what is likely going to happen. And of course, SQL, structured query language, which you cannot run away from as anybody working in data. And there comes 
Python programming. And this is a key component of you being a data scientist because your Python is what you use to build your machine learning models. You'd also use Python for your exploratory data analysis, machine learning, and of course, computer vision. Femina talked about computer vision a lot, okay? And this is simply where you are using, you are building programs that would allow your computer, for example, using your webcam to detect objects. So when your computer sees your five hands, it detects that you have five shown. If you do four fingers, it shows that you have four fingers, all right? And this is you giving your camera the power to see like a human being. You create programs like that. And you'd also learn GitHub for version control, chat GPT and GitHub Copilot, and also Microsoft Fabric for data science. And how long does it take you for to become a data scientist? Four months, three months projects-based classes, and one month internship. So for three months, you'll be working on projects. Every single thing you learn from statistics to Excel, you'd work on a real life project. And I'll show you the platform and the type of projects you're going to work on. For people that have gone through the program, you'll see what they have also learned and the type of projects they have worked on. And then you intern for one month, working in collaboration with a data engineer, with a data analyst on solving key problems for a real company, all right? And then we move to the data engineer. The data engineer is that professional that ensures that the data is available in the company. So whenever the company generates data, the data is in different locations and different systems. So who brings the data from those systems into a central location that can easily be accessed? And that's the data engineer. The data engineer is the data provider. The data engineer is the data plumber. The plumber is that person that creates the pipes that will take water from the tank and bring the water into the restroom, into the kitchen, and into all the locations that needs water to be in the house. That's what the data engineer does. The data engineer will take data from all the different systems and bring that data into a central location called the data warehouse. Okay, the data warehouse. So bring data, you have data in different systems which anybody cannot just access those systems. The data engineer would create pipelines, bringing the data from those systems into the data warehouse. And by doing this, the data analyst can then access the data. The data scientist can also access the data. The HR analyst can also access the data. So the role of the data engineer is very important because without the data available, the data analyst cannot do their job. The data scientists cannot do their job. That's why the data engineer is also highly paid because it's a fundamental role in any organization. So you start by learning introduction to data engineering, and then you move into SQL. Like I said, you can't go into anything data without understanding structured query language. That's the language for databases, for data warehousing, and so on and so forth, all right? You'd also learn Python to build your data pipelines. So you see the pipelines you're going to build to take data from different systems into the data warehouse. You're gonna build them using the, pipe, the Python programming language. You're also going to learn Linux for your scripts, your bash scripting and so on and so forth. You'd learn to build ETL pipelines connecting to different sources, databases, APIs, web, the different websites to get data from those different locations. You'll learn Apache Spark, Apache Airflow, for data pipeline automation and cloud engineering using AWS, okay? So somebody asked me the other time, cloud computing, cloud engineering, you're going to learn that as a data engineer using the AWS platform, you know, to help you understand how to, you know, manage, create data infrastructure in the cloud using AWS. Version control using GitHub and chat GPT and GitHub co-pilots. And these are the skills you would learn as a data engineer to help you create data infrastructure in the company, maintain those infrastructure, and ensure that data is available in every 
organization, all right? And how long does it take? It's a little bit longer than the other programs. It takes you five months, and that's because you've been learning for three months in a project-based environment, and then your internship is for two months because you're working on an end-to-end -end data engineering project that will take you a lot of time. And the reason why you need to work on this project is because you need to show that you can do it and you've done it before, all right? Without the ability to do it and speak to recruiters in a way that shows that you have done it before, you're not going to get that job. So for our participants who have gotten jobs as data engineers, we have a participant that works with Jaguar Land Rover in the UK as a data engineer. We have another participant that works as a data engineer with another organization in the UK, in the US, and so on and so forth. You need to show that you can build these amazing pipelines. You need to show the type of projects that you have worked on before. And this is what you need to become a data engineer. Now let's move into Scrum. And Scrum is one of the most exciting career path. And this is where you are a coach to a team that is trying to build a product, all right? Now, why is Scrum so important? Scrum masters are experts when it comes to the agile methodology. Because in project management, you have different methodologies. You have the waterfall. Waterfall is a bit, um, I would say it's a bit static and it's a bit unwieldy because when you use waterfall, you need to complete one task, then you move to the other task. When you complete that, you move to the next task. And apart from that, waterfall also means that you plan for everything on that project before the project starts. And with tech, it doesn't work that way. When, you are, when a tech company is releasing tech products, like your Facebook, like your Instagram, everything is not complete. You still get updates on Instagram, maybe weekly or monthly, but you get updates. And that's where the Scrum Master comes in. So the Scrum Master works using the sprints. Sprints are simply implementing the most important things within a very short period. And when you're able to implement the key features of a product within a short period, you can send that into the market. The markets would test it, give you feedback, and based on the feedback, you are able to improve that particular product. And using that is part of the Agile framework, the Agile methodology. So whenever you see your Facebook or you see your Instagram or you see any other you know, tech-related product that you use, get updated with new features. You can now upload pictures. You can now do screen sharing on WhatsApp. These things never existed before. And these are updates that get into those platforms from time to time. And that is only possible when you have the Agile framework built into projects. And the masters of Agile are the Scrum masters. And this is why a tech company would not just hire a project manager to help them execute projects. They would hire a Scrum Master because the Scrum Master is the master of Agile. And Agile is what is needed to get tech-related products out there into the market. And that's the role of the Scrum Master. So you learn introduction to Scrum, the Scrum Team Artifacts, Product Backlog, the Scrum Artifacts, Sprint Backlog, Increments, the Scrum Events, like your Sprint Planning and so on and so forth. You learn Nexus Scale Scrum, which is you implementing Scrum on a larger scale and also the preparation for the professional Scrum Master certification, all right? So for us, the focus is not on you writing a certification or writing an exam, but the focus is on you knowing how to do the job on the first day. And we have Scrum Masters who have come to us. They have the certification, but they don't know how to do the job, no experience in doing the job. So the Scrum Master program is for two months. One month working in class, learning all the Scrum you know, um, methodologies, learning all the Scrum rules, the Agile methodology. And then for one month, you also get to work on a real project during your internship. So you would learn how to use tools like Jira to track project deliverables. You'd learn how to use Trello to collaborate 
and track you know the progress of projects across different teams and this is what you'll be doing working on a web application project the same project the business analyst would work on as a scrum master you'd also work on that project because those are the type of projects that you'd have to work on in the real world because recruiters would want to see that you have done it before tell me about the time you've done this and then i can see that um, you really have the skill. Kelechi is saying, can I use my data science skills to predict sports events? <laughs> well, you can, obviously, uh, but, you know, sports has so many variables, all right? Predicting how a game would end is a, you know, is a myriad of different factors. But, of course, you can build a model that helps you predict. In fact, today, companies use analytics Sports companies, sports teams use analytics. And I can tell you a story about Celtics and Rangers, but I don't want to go into that. Celtics were unbeaten for about five years, all right? And Rangers came up to beat them. And the only reason why Rangers could beat them was Rangers had employed a data scientist on the team. Search, search for this on Google and you'll see the reports come up. So Rangers had employed a data scientist. The data scientist did some analysis and could see that all Rangers needed to do was to field players that could run at an average of, I think about, I can't remember how many kilometers per hour, but to field players that could run and not players that were skilled, who could dribble and so on and so forth, okay? And this was based on Celtics performance. So they analyzed Celtics performance to see where they had very close calls, teams that almost beat them but could not beat them. What was the factor that played a role in those teams getting that far? And they saw that the teams that could run very fast, the teams that chased the ball from the beginning to the end of the match gave Celtic headache. So they used that analysis to select the teams that played against, to select the team members that played against Celtic. And they ended Celtics five years on beating run, if I'm correct. But do a Google search and you see this. So this is applicable in so many um, areas. We've used the Celtics Rangers case studies so many times. I was one of the things I also worked on for so many years ago. All right. So that's for you being the Scrum Master. Now, for a cybersecurity analyst, this is you as a professional protecting the systems, the networks, the data of an organization protecting it from thefts, protecting it from people who would want to hack into those systems, all right? And a cybersecurity analyst, you need to understand what you are going into in the first place, introduction to cybersecurity, the history of computing, networking, and so on. So you understand the foundation of networking, sec information security principles, offensive and defensive cybersecurity, cryptography, network security, attack vectors, endpoint security, web application security, cloud security, because today data is all in the cloud, all right? So how do you protect those systems? How do you protect the data that you have? Incident reporting, and of course, cybersecurity policies and compliance. And these are the things you'd learn as a cybersecurity analyst. And how long does it take? Four months, three months project-based classes, and one month, working on real world projects. And these are the eight different career paths. Now, I, I walked through this at a very fast pace, okay, because of time. And if you ever want to listen in detail to all the different career paths, explained one by one, if you click on this link when you receive the slide, you'd also get to listen to the detailed explanation for all the programs. But we don't have all, all the time during this session, but it was important that you saw the skills that you need for each specific program, for the data and analytics program, what do you need to learn? For the data science, a lot of people start from learning Python in data science, but that's very wrong because as a data scientist, there are foundations before you get into Python. If you start with Python, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get confused, and you're going to waste a whole lot of time. I found myself in that situation, but I learned the hard way. A lot of you would also find yourselves in that situation because you are also trying to learn alone, and that's why we have created 
a structured learning approach. All right. So I'm going to hand over to Ifemena to continue with why you should train with us and why it's important for you to get to have the right learning partner, not just a training company, because that's not who we are at Analytics. We are your learning partner, showing you exactly what you need to do. All right. So if a man will take over from here and in the next 20 minutes, tell you what the price of the programs are, how you can join any of our programs and why it is important that you start your journey with us, Tenalytics. Okay, if a man, over to you. Let's go. All right, let's 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 get it on, okay? I'm sure you guys have enjoyed yourself today and you've learned a lot from our conversation so far. And uh, mm -hmm. this career part, eight career part that we talked about, that these are give very detailed explanation to you. All right, if you were looking to get it started, this is the best platform to be on. All right, this is the best platform because we've been there, we've done it, and we're coming back to see how we can help more Africans transition to the tech space. But I'm not going to waste too much time. Let's go through why you should trade with analytics. All right, so we have a list of achievements that we're going to talk about shortly. Okay, all right, in 2023, last year, okay, just last year, 2023, okay, we helped. 850 plus people transition into the tech space, all right? And the key word that we should look at is from classroom into their first job. From classroom into their first job. So the reason why we, the reason why we carved it this way is so that you know outrightly that these people had no prior experience. And if you, don't, if you doubt it, we have a ton of evidence to showcase that these people had no experience. You could check out their LinkedIn, you could look at their testimonial videos and you can look at their, you know, experiences on LinkedIn and so on. All right. No experience. And they were able to transition from classroom into getting their first job. And we did over 850 plus of them in 2023. All right. In 2022, we did about 500 plus. We did about over five, shyly, just above 500. All right. In 2023, we said, that, you know what, we need to do more to get more Africans into the tech space. And we pushed and we were able to achieve 850 new people without experience that were able to get new jobs within the tech space. We had other people, other professionals that were able to transition that had you know, a little bit of experience, they had experience. Take for example, oh, we had somebody that worked as a business analyst that wanted to you know, learn data analytics to be able to get jobs as a business data analyst, all right? We had people that were data analysts looking to become data scientists or data engineer. All right, so they had like, you know, prior experience, okay, in data analytics and they were looking to upskill themselves, okay, which is fine, all right? But if we put that in front of you as a beginner, you, you are likely going to be biased to say that, oh, these people had experience before. So not to discount these people, all right? The key reason why we're talking about these achievements, about eight, helping 850 plus people transition into this expert from classroom, okay, no experience, no background, no certification, no degree, nothing, all right, from the classroom, learning all these skills that we talked about into getting their first job. That's one thing you need to understand. And that's the reason why we're putting it in your face right now to tell you that people have done it. 850 plus people did it last year and you could be part of the set of people that will do it this year, all right? And I want you to touch your head and say that I'll be part of these people this year, okay? Hallelujah, <laughs> all right? And that's why we're here today to talk about this, to be honest with you, all right? If not, all right? And that's why we are going to be talking about why you should share with us and what makes us unique, to be very honest with you, all right? So there are five things that we've combined together to tell you the reason why you should train with us. First of all, up to the curriculum. And this has given, you know, a detailed run through about the curriculum. And you will see that certain things that you never thought you should learn are in the curriculum, Okay. Data business analysis, you're learning data analytics, you're learning Excel, you're learning Power BI, you're learning SQL. It's a business analyst. I want you to go out to check out any other curriculum out there. If you would see such kind of curriculum, you wouldn't. And that's the reason why we have an up-to-date curriculum. The same thing with data analytics, you're learning chat GPT, you're learning, you know, Microsoft Fabrics, data engineering, you're learning Py uh, PySpark, you're learning SQL, you're learning Python, you're learning AWS, cloud engineering. So you see, our curriculum is what you mean up to date, you know, what you call up to date, okay? For you to understand exactly what is happening in the industry and make you desirable once you finish learning. That's the whole essence for it, 
okay? And you're not just learning this by yourself, okay? All right, you have industry experts, which is going to take me to the second one. All right, industry experts that are going to hold your hands all through the way. People that have a world of experience that, to, that would guide you and tell you what to do, what to learn, all right, how to learn it, the practical real life examples of how this thing is being used in the industry. You would get out, you know, first time learning experience from an industry expert. Number three, blended training delivery. So we have a combination of life classes. All right, we have a combination of live classes and what we call watch me do it videos. Watch me do it videos. Basically, these are self-paced material. And the question we were trying to answer was, how do we get a fast-paced learner and a slow-paced learner together in the same class to move at the same pace? You, once you see it one time, you're fine. You're good to go to eat the ground running. You can practicalize, you can do all that. We have another set of people that they need to see, they need to listen to explanation, they need to practice in order for them to conceptualize and know how to use it. All right, so now how do we have this set of people to learn together in the same class? And that's how we devise the blended training approach, whereby we have the live classes and we have watch me do it videos, which are bite-sized videos that would allow you to practice on your own. All right. So at your own time in your bedroom, in your office, or anywhere in the world where you wherever you are, you can get this watch me do it videos and practice by yourself. Okay. And move at the pace, at your own pace. Okay. Whenever you now come to class on the weekend, all right, you have the live classes on the weekend, you now practice, you know, do another life practical or that thing that you learned, you know, by yourself. And you can see the real life impact of those things. Okay. So we have a blended approach to learning, live classes and the watch me do it videos. We have additional employability services, okay, in which I'll get to talk more about in the next few slides. And number five is the internship experience. So you get that real life experience, like you've worked as a data analyst, like you've worked as a cybersecurity analyst, like you've worked as a data engineer or whichever career path that you're going into. So when you combine all these five together, you now become an industry ready tech professional. All right, because you would have learned from the update or from, from an update up to date curriculum. You would have learned with you know an industry expert. You would have gained experience working on live projects and also working on the watch me do it video projects. You would have had you know additional employability services and you would have gained quality hands-on experience through the internship program. All right. So this combined together would make you ready to eat the ground running. All right. Like our president, eat the ground running. Let's go. How do you now position you for success through the three layers approach? How do we position you for success in the industry? And we have our own approach, which we call the three layered approach. Okay. So you said level one, this is what is personal branding. Okay. The first thing is your CV review it would help you revamp your CV. All right. It would help you revamp and review your CV. So we have people that say that, oh, I don't have any experience in data analytics. I don't have any experience in data science. I have no experience in financial analytics. How do I, you know, put that in my CV? How do I, I create my CV? Me that don't have like, any experience. Fine, that's good. Would we'll help you do that. Okay, oh, I've been working in customer service, but I want to become a cybersecurity analyst. How do I tie, you know, customer service and cybersecurity analyst together? would help you do that. That's exactly what we mean by revamping and reviewing your CV. So basically make you attractive to potential recruiters. I would also help you update certain keywords, help you revamp and you know get you those keywords that you need to have in your CV that will guarantee you to get a call back from a recruiter, okay? We'd also work on LinkedIn optimization. So whenever you apply for a job on LinkedIn, you are part of the, you, are part, you, you have a part, you have an higher rank, okay? And then it's a recruiter, is also looking for roles or looking for, you know, looking for employees online on LinkedIn. Your profile will be one of the top, you know, um, top searches they're going to see whenever they search for that particular role. Okay. So you get LinkedIn optimization, you get CV review, you get Upwork optimization. So an Upwork, Upwork is a freelance site where you could actually get freelance opportunity, work freelance, and um, you could actually earn pooling dollars you know, working on Upwork. I'll show you that platform if we have enough time towards the end of the session. So we've talked about CV review, help you revamp and review your CV. You have experience, you don't have experience, we'll do all that work for you. LinkedIn optimization gets you ranking high on LinkedIn. 
So whenever a recruiter is looking to hire for a particular role within your domain, you will be part of the first set of people they will see. Okay, just like Google. When you go on Google and you want to buy the best shoe or you want to buy a particular shoe, you see Google will recommend the best sites, the best place for you to get a particular shoe. That's the same thing with LinkedIn optimization, where whenever a recruiter goes online on LinkedIn to search for potential candidates, your profile will be in their face to say that this person is good enough to take that role. All right. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing for LinkedIn optimization. All product optimization, freelance, for you to work freelance anywhere in the world. You could be in Nigeria, working freelance for a company in the US, and so on. All right? So, navigating the job market. A lot of people are nice to to navigate how to navigate the job market. So, as a new entrant, take, for example, HR analytics. You want to learn HR analytics when you're looking to transition. All right? A lot of people will think that, oh, I can only apply to HR analyst roles. Meanwhile, you could actually apply to, you know, people analysts talent analyst, compensation analyst, benefits analyst. There are so many rules you could actually apply to. And that's how we teach you how to navigate the job market. There's also something we call the eating job market. How do you gain access to the eating job market? How do you apply for a job? How do you negotiate your salary? When a recruiter asks you, you know, tell me, you know, what your asking price is. Do you just go out and blout out the price that you want? Or is there a process of you negotiating your salary? Okay, interview tips and all those things are what we do during navigating the job market to teach you how to get the most out of the job market. Okay, job and interview preparation. So this is where we now prepare you for the interview. So you have a good CV, you have a good LinkedIn, you have your LinkedIn profile optimized. You know how to navigate to the job market. I can guarantee you, you're going to get interviews. All right. So with that interview, what we do is to prepare you for the interview where we have a mock interview session to, you know, simulate as though you are currently in the interview. I will give you potential questions that will likely come off, okay, during the in interview and see how you perform. So during that performance, we would evaluate and also give you, you know, key areas for you to improve on. And really, this is what has really made us successful or make our candidates successful during the interview process. Because majority of the time, right, you are interviewing for, a financial analytics role, uh, financial analytics role, all right? And they're asking you a question about financial analytics, or they're asking you about questions around that. How do you know how to answer this question? Being the fact that this is your first time interviewing for those role, all right, for that particular role, okay? So you don't want to learn by mistake. You want to, we want to teach you to avoid those mistakes. So that's what we do during the job interview preparation session. We also have recommendation and reference letter. So eventually once you do the interview, you get the job. Most times, international experience, international organization would always want you to get a reference from your prior uh, prior experience. So now, with that prior experience, if you're working as a carpenter or you're working as a organizer or you're working as whatever role you're working in, those rules can't guarantee, can't reference, recommend you for a data science role or a data engineering role. Those organizations don't have the capacity because you're working as Let's say a customer service representative, all right? You can't then use that same organization to act as a reference for a data science role that you've gotten. So hence the reason where we come in, all right? So you can claim work experience from Tenalytics and use it in getting this job, all right? So whenever you get the job and they're looking for reference, we will stand in as your referee, okay? We'll stand in as that organization that shows the skills that you've learned and also how you have applied it to a real life scenario, all right? So recommendation and reference letter all covered for you just to ensure that you get the role, all right? Weekly mentorship and on the job support. So weekly mentorship session, this is where we bring in experts from the, sub, from the industry to come and talk to you again, all right? So you see, it's not just about you learning, it's also about you seeing people that have done this thing. All right, there is this power, there's this confidence that comes with, oh, I know somebody that got a job. Oh, I know somebody in the US. Oh, I know somebody from the UK that struggled with this particular thing. And the person has come in to talk about this particular experience. Things around imposter syndrome, things like analysis paralysis, where you're always analyze, over analyzing situations, where you feel like you're not confident enough. So people have been in this situation before. So we bring in mentors to come and, and hold you and guide you about their own failures their own success 
and see how you can leverage this in getting started. So we'll bring in a lot of mentors, okay? And I'll talk more about the type of mentors that we're gonna be bringing in in a, just a few minutes, okay? Now on the job support, this one, you need it. I won't lie to you. As a beginner looking to transition, you need a company that will guarantee you on the job support. Why, you would ask. Uh, most times as a beginner, you're getting started, you get the job, okay? You're likely going to be faced with a particular challenge that might be slightly more difficult than you thought it would be, all right? So when you're faced with that particular challenge, what happens? Do you give up to say that, oh, this job is too difficult for me, I'm going to quit, okay? So what we do is provide you with all the job support. So whenever you're faced with this challenge, just send us a message. Send us a message. We're always going to keep in contact with you. Send us an email, send us a message and would help you solve this problem. So we provide on the job support to give you that confidence, training wheels, all right? Just like a child will learn with learn how to ride a bicycle using training wheels, we would also guarantee you this on the job support so that when you get the job, all right, you still get the support from us to ensure that you can ride by yourself without any support. So you see weekly mentorship sessions, we, you gar you're guaranteed that, and also on the job support. Now, the third layer is what we are doing new, this is a new thing that we are doing this year, which is we are now guaranteeing you job interviews one month after completing the training program, all right? So even while you're doing the training program, if you're like, even while you're going through the training program, you can get interviews. But the one we're guaranteeing is one month after the training program, you will get interviews. Now, once you get those interviews, all right, you'll get job prepared. We'll, you Obviously, we'll prepare you for the job interview and you know, you have a higher chance of you securing that job. Now, a lot of people are wondering, how do you guarantee interviews? If you're guaranteeing the interviews, there has to be a process. There has to be a process of you guaranteeing us this interview. All right? Do we have organizations? Do we have this company in the US, in the UK? that will guarantee these interviews. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes, okay? And that's based on the new addition that we're going into. And you see, at the end, at the, at the, at the center of everything that we're doing, okay, the key thing is how do we get more Africans into the tech space? That's, a, that's one thing that you keep resounding. Everything that you're thinking about in analytics, we are basically helping more Africans get into the tech space. All right? Now, number one is body mentorship of, okay? What we're trying to initiate this new year, okay? The body mentorship of. Now, what, what does this mean? I told you earlier that we, you know, we helped 850 people plus, 850 plus people get a job in the tax space last year. 2022, we did the same. 2021, we did the same. 2020, we did the same. So over the years, we've built a pool of experts. We've built a pool of alumni, solid alumni, people that have learned and have gone on to transition, okay? Now, these guys are coming back to say that, okay, you know, newbies that are looking to get it started, they were in your shoes before, and they're coming back to see, how can I also help other people that are finding it difficult or that are not confident in themselves in transitioning? How can I help these people transition? Hence the body mentorship hall. So now our alumni are the one coming back now to say that, you know what, we would undo these people, we would help you, it's analytics, you've done a lot for us. We'll come back to and all these people to see how we can also get them into the tech space. So they're coming in as what we call a body mentorship, body mentor to help you, you know, guide your way through the tech space. All right. Now, we are also talking about the second part is the end uh, internship experience. So we are building a more robust internship experience for you to gain that hands on experience in order for you to make it easy transition, you know, make easy transitioning into the tech space. Uh, number three, is the one that would now lead to guaranteed job interviews. So what we are doing is we have secured some partnership and we are still working on more partnership okay, with recruitment agencies in the UK, in Canada, and in the US, alongside other countries of the world, all right? So now currently we've, we've secured some, okay? And we're currently working with some also, like the likes of Age Recruitment, Robert Arf, Avi Nat, uh, Michael Page, and Deco, Manpower, Conferry, Kelsey Services, uh, Tech Systems, and so on. So some of this, you know, we've secured. Some of them, we're working on the partnership with them at this point in time to securing it. And essentially, what we are doing is building a job pipeline. So we are building our own job pipeline to see how we can get our people within analytics. All right. So you train with analytics. All right. 
these guys, which is the recruitment agencies, RA, recruitment agencies, they have the jobs and they post these jobs online. They get them posted online. So what we're doing is we are securing this partnership with the recruitment agencies to build our job pipeline, all right? So whenever you finish from Tenalytics, you get recommended, all right? You get recommended recommended for the jobs that are posted on their websites, okay? Data analytics, data science, data engineering, business analysis, HR, finance, and cyber security, Scrum, and so on and so forth. So whenever the role comes out, we get, you know, we get notified, okay, that the role is up. We get you recommended, all right? You get the interview, okay? You get the interview, all right? And we prepare you for that interview. We don't leave you angry. We prepare you for the interview. And eventually, by God's grace, you know, you do well in the interview, you can get a job, all right? But that doesn't mean that it's just one interview, all right? We would give for guarantee, you know, interviews, all right? And those interviews will definitely land you the dream job you're looking for. So you see, we're putting in so much work, okay? So much effort, so much work to go back to the same vision I talked about earlier. Ah, do we get more Africans into the tech space? How do we find the challenge to get our first job, okay? All that conversation we had earlier, it took us about two years in order for us to be able to transition and get that first job in the tech space. But now you see, how do we make it easier for you? You shouldn't spend two years, all right? You should not learn and spend two years to get a job. And that's what we've been doing. Well, now we're trying to see how we can even do it better, all right? And that's why we're securing this partnership with top recruitment firms across the world to ensure that that efficient pipeline is there. You finish learning, all right? You apply, okay? We also recommend you for certain jobs and eventually you get the job. All right. So we have a training program. We have all the training programs that we talked about today. It's going to be starting on the 3rd of February, 2024. All right. We have, we have the training program starting on the 3rd of February, 2024. Now, you snooze, you lose. That's the key thing. All right. The key, what's the theme for this year? Can anybody remind me for the theme of the year? Let me see. Let me see the people in the chat that knows the theme for the year. What is the theme of the year? What is the team for 2023? No grief. Yes, yeah, so exactly. <laughs> All right. I see my people in the house. Let's go. <laughs> no grief for anybody. That's exactly what it is. Okay. So you see, we have an awesome discount for the first 20 people to register. This is where the no grief for anybody will come in. No grief for anybody. All right. So we have the first discount for the first 20 people to look into register. And I want you not to grieve for anybody and register and take advantage of that discount. All right. So essentially, if you are looking to get it started, okay, all right, rather than you paying the full amount, okay, rather than you paying the full amount, we have a discount running at this point in time. We have a discount running at this point in time. Okay. So now for if you're looking to get into data analytics, business analysis. HR analytics, financial analytics, or data science, all right? All right, either of these five curriculums, either of these five career paths, the amount, the original amount is $750, and you have to pay this in full, okay? This is the full amount. You need to pay this in full. The equivalent in pound is 625 pounds, and the equivalent in Naira is 900,000 Naira, okay? But now we're running a discount for the first 10 people, okay? All right, first 10 people to register. First 10 people to register. Now, the discount, all right, rather than you paying this in full, $750 in full, you could actually pay $600. Now, the good thing about you paying in discount, the discounted amount, is that you can pay in two installments, all right? If you're paying in full, all right, if you're paying the full amount, you need to pay this in full at once. But with the discounted that amount, you can actually pay in two installments, all right? The first installment is what will guarantee your space in class, okay? So in order for you to, the train program starting on the 3rd of February, in order for you to secure your slots, you need to pay $450 to secure your space, all right? Then the second payment, okay, $150 will come one month into the training program, one month into the training program. So when you're talking about flexibility, you know that this is, all right, this is exactly what you need, all right? Payment flexibility. 
to ensure that you are not you know, you are not paying everything at once and making it you know uncomfortable for you. We're trying to make it as comfortable and as easy for you to transition. All right, and that's the same thing. I'll go back to the vision and the mission. How do we get more Africans into the tech space? All right. So your first this the first amount you need to pay is four hundred and fifty dollars, and then you can balance one fifty dollars one month into the training program. All right. And if you are in pounds, you're paying five hundred pounds. Okay. You can pay into installments of what three seventy five to secure your sports. Then one twenty five one month into the training program. Okay. Now for data engineering and cyber security, okay, the full amount is nine hundred dollars or equivalent of seven fifty seven fifty pounds. For the discounted amount, which will allow you to pay in, which will allow you to pay in uh, two installments, is seven fifty dollars and six twenty five pounds equivalent. So if you are going into data engineering or cyber security, this is the amount you should need to pay in order for you to get selected for the training program on the 3rd of February. So the discounted amount you can pay in two installments. All right, you can pay $550 to secure your spot or £460 equivalent. And you can pay the balance of £265 one month into the training program. Okay, so you pay the discounted amount allows you to pay in two installments all right allows you to pay in two installments so the first one is what we get you registered for the third of february and uh, the scrum master on the other end we have you paying the full amount of 450 or 375 pounds equivalent all right but rather than you doing that what would you do pay the discounted amount okay which is has been designed for you to make payment for and which allows you to pay in two installments of $250 or £200 equivalent or and pay the balance of £195 equivalent you know, for the second installment, one month into the training program. So you see, when they talk about convenience and flexibility, all right, this is exactly what it's been designed for. All right, so what I would say is this one is recommended, all right? This is what the doctor recommended, all right? All right, so this is what the doctor recommended for you to pay, okay? So if you're looking to transition into the text page, you see everything has been designed from the up-to-date curriculum to the expert that you speak with, to the mentorship, to the CV review, to the LinkedIn optimization. These things are not priced separately. These things are all together, all infused together with the partnership with recruitment firms in the UK, in the US, and so on. All these are all self-included, all included in the discounted amount. So all you need to do now, all right, is to make payment and get started. That's the only thing you need. Get started, okay? Start now, okay, and see where you are in the next two, three months, okay? And you'll be like, oh, thank, thank you to Analytics for, you know, providing this background, providing this, you know, platform for us to get started. So if you're looking to get started, this is where you need to get started, okay? All right? So um, I'm just going to get... Adesa, Adesa, do you want to walk us through? Okay, let me just walk you through the payment payment gateway. So all you need to do now is click on the link, okay? Click on the link provided in the chat. Click on the link mainstack.me slash enroll. So I'm going to walk you through how you can make payments, okay? All right, just give me a second. Adesa, could you take over? My mouse is acting up, sorry. No problem. Let me go ahead and share my screen very quickly. Okay, so uh, before I go on, BSSSS, I think um, you can go ahead and interact with Oluwashe. Oluwashe is with us. Moshe, you need to retitle your name so that um, it should be Shay from Tenalytic. So it's clear that, you know, you are with us. But you can go ahead. Be Yes, okay. Oluwashe is with us. You'd see Oluwashe, you'd see Linda, um, Lydia, and you'd also see um, Elijah. Okay, so you can you can interact with them. Okay, so let's go on and I'm just going to show you how to make payments uh, for those of you that will be making payments. So this is the enrollment center. So if you click on the link that Ifemena had shared, it brings you here to the Tenalytics Enrollment Center. And all you have to do is 
Uh, you have access to the program brochures, all the brochures, the data analytics brochure, the data science, data engineering, HR analytics. If you click on this link, it takes you into the program brochures, okay? So you can have a look at the data analytics, for example, and see the nitty gritty. One other thing you should take note of is it doesn't matter where you are. If you are in Canada, you are in the UK, we have times that fit into your time zone. Okay, so your class on Saturday, you don't need to join classes at odd hours, at 5 a.m., at 4 a.m., no. So those in the UK, those in, I'm just going to scroll down so that you see what it looks like. So if you're in Nigeria, you are in the UK, you are in Europe, similar time zone, you get to join a specific class. Okay, if you are in Canada, you are in the U.S., you also have the opportunity of joining the class at a time that fits your zone, which is 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., mountain standard time okay and for those in nigeria those in the uk it's 11 a.m to 2 p.m west africa time okay so you have access to the brochure that gives you an amazing you know um, insight into every single thing you're going to learn okay and you have the curriculum by clicking on that link but how do you then go ahead to make payments all you have to do is scroll all the way down all right and you can do a direct transfer. If you're in the UK, you can do a direct transfer to our pound account. That's one option. But you want to make payments using your card. All you have to do is come here. You'd see the non-Naira card payment. You want to pay in dollars, in Canadian dollars, in euros, in pounds. It doesn't matter the currency. All you need to do is come here. You'd see the specific program you want to join. And just click on the link. If you want to register for the business analysis, click on business analysis and then it takes you into the main start page. All right, and we're just going to wait for that to load. And as soon as it comes up, I'll show you how you can go ahead and secure your discounted slots. Okay, um, we've had the discount running for about a week to two weeks. We started with 20 people, um, but now it's just available to 10. Okay, and I'll tell you that you want to get your journey started, this is the best time for you to start. I saw somebody saying I'll join in March. In March, this discount is not going to be available. Okay, so what you want to do, even if you want to start in March, is for you to secure the discount this month by making a deposit, and then you can defer your program to you know to start on the second of March. So how do you go ahead and make payment? So once you clicked on the program, this is the business analysis, all right? You'd see the fee. It's 500 pounds, right? But because of the, um, the, the rates, you have an additional two pounds discount. So 498 um, is what you, if you pay today, you don't have to pay 500, you pay 498, which is a discount on a discount for you. But all you need to do is pay the very first installment, which is 375. So I just come in here and I type in 375. That's how much I want to pay in pounds. And then I click on proceed to pay. And this takes me here. I enter my email. All right. I enter my full name. I enter my phone number. And then I click on proceed. All right. Once you click on proceed, you enter your payment details, um, your card details. You enter that. You go ahead and you make payments. And then you receive in the link for you to fill the registration form, you're going to receive that automatically. Now, the link to fill the registration form after making payments um, is also on this particular page. Okay, so I'll show you what it looks like. So this is where you fill the form, upload your receipts. And this is usually for those that make payments doing a direct transfer. Um, you want to take a screenshot of that payment, come in here, click on this link, upload your receipts, and then you'd have to enter your details, okay? So you fill your email, your, the type of payment, if it's the full payment or initial payment, and then you complete the entire form, okay? I'll come back to walk you through the form. And now let's assume you want to pay in Naira, okay? You are in Nigeria, you want to make payments in Naira, you have that option. And we collect Naira payments using Paystack. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Paystack. And all you have to do is, Click on this link for all programs and it takes you into the Paystack platform. All right, you can select the program that you want. Full stack data science, click on that. And you can select if it is the full payment or the part payment. 
And if you select part payment, for example, you can go ahead and add to bag and that's it. Okay, so that's how you can also make payments using that option, all right? Um, so those are the options you can use to make payments to be a part of the program. Okay, so you can pay using, and if you are in Ghana, you are somewhere in Africa, in South Africa, it doesn't matter where you are, use any of these links and it does the conversion for you. So if you are paying in euros, for example, you'll see the corresponding amount in dollars. Okay, if you are paying in Swiss francs, you'd see the corresponding amount in dollars. All you have to do is select the program that you would love to join and then you get into the program. If I want the Scrum Master, I click on that and so on and so forth. Again, remember, take advantage of the discounts. And when you are filling the form, for those who want to start in March, you have the option to select March. If you wait till March, the discount is off. You have to pay the full $750. We've seen a lot of people coming to say, hey, I don't, I still want the discount and so on. However, this is the time for you to take advantage of that discount. So when filling the form, you just come here, enter your details, click on next, um, select when you're going to receive your welcome kit and everything, click on next. Okay. Um, enter your first name, last name, registration, gender, click on next. Read the terms and conditions, click on next. Okay, when did you make payments? Screenshot of payments. So for those of you that have made payments, you pay using Paystack, you get an automated receipt into your email. Come in here and upload that receipt, okay, as proof of payments. How did you make payments? I made payments using Paystack or I made payments using main stack, which is where you make payments in pounds, in dollars, and so on. And then you click on next. Which program did you register for? Okay, so for some of you, you are still a bit confused, all right? I don't know if I should go for the business analysis or data analytics. Make your payment, secure the discount, and when you are filling the form, rather than selecting any specific program because you are not yet sure, select I need to speak with a professional. And on Tuesday, myself, Efemena, and other professionals at Analytics will sit down with you and answer those specific questions. Look at your experience and say, okay, since you're not sure, this is what we think. We're not going to select a program for you, but we will guide you to selecting uh, the appropriate program. So that happens on Tuesdays, 2 p.m. West Africa time, and also another session in the evening, 11 p.m. So if you are busy during the day at 2 p.m., you will be able to join us at 11 p.m. in the evening. And if any of those you know, times are not um, convenient for you, we can schedule a call outside that to walk you through how to select any of the programs. But you only get that when you get to make payments to be a part of the program. You click on next, and this is where you get to see the cohorts, okay? So you are busy in February. You'll be engaged to start on the 3rd of February, all right? You have some commitments already in the office, or you don't really have um, your current shifts or your current, you know, work rota requires you to work on, you know, weekends on February and you want to start in March, all you have to do is come here. When do you intend to start? Instead of selecting February, you select what? Second of March. And this is how you secure the discount for March. You don't secure the discount for March by paying later. No, you secure the discount by taking advantage of the discount today. Last week, it was 20 people, but that 20 people has gone down and it is 10. And registration also closes on Wednesday, the 31st. So on Wednesday, the 31st, even if you come with your full amount that you want to register after Wednesday, if you come on a Thursday, you want to still pay, that would not be accepted. Registration would have closed for um, that cohort would move you to March eventually if you want to still join the program. So you fill all the forms, submit the form, we receive the details, and you receive a welcome kit from us. Okay? And that's how you get to make payments. All right. I think that's pretty much um, how to navigate the payments page. And if you ever have any questions on oh, I'm trying to make payments, I'm not sure, I'm getting one or two issues, I have one or two issues, very, very straightforward. All you have to do is just send us an email, 
to inquiries at analytics.io or just send us a message to any of these numbers. All right? Send us a message to any of these numbers. Send us an email and somebody would respond to you and help you navigate your way around um, the payments or any other thing that you want to um, ask. All right? So we're still just going to quickly um, look through the questions. Jabona, Jibona is saying, sorry, I'm out of job right now, so I want to translate something like this, but money is just the issue. I was thinking it would be uh, 200K for all the value, Jibona. <laughs> if we tell you that it's 200K, you think we are scammers. <laughs> so now nah, the, the, it's not the value. Look at the value. It's not commensurate, okay? So, yeah. We'll take questions. If you have questions, please use the, raise, the hand raised icon and we'll be very happy to take your questions, all right? So while we wait for questions to come up, I'll quickly walk you through the platform because I know I had promised to show you earlier. So when you register, how do you learn? What type of projects are you going to work on? And so on and so forth. So I'll quickly show you the platform while we also wait for your questions to come in. So when you register with us, and one of the beauty, people asking, okay, um, how do I learn? Is it flexible? Is it virtual? Is it in-house? Do I have to learn physically? Now, because we have so many participants from across the globe, all right, the best way to learn is to learn in a virtual environment where you get a trainer like myself or other experts on a Saturday, they work with you, you work on projects, they show you what you need to do, you do them and you have the option of asking questions and you get feedback real time. Okay, so let's look at what the people of the November, I beg your pardon, the January cohorts are currently doing. So let's check out business analysis, for example, and let's see what they are doing in class. Okay, so for the business analysis, you can see you have the NA, which is North America. You have EU, which for those in Europe, West Africa, similar time zone, somewhere around Europe, you get to join this class because it fits your time zone, all right? So let's open up the class and see what they have been doing so far and what you would also get to do when you register with us, okay? So this is what your platform would look like and this is your classroom. And the classroom contains every single thing that you need during the program. Your class recordings, every single session is recorded. So if you miss a class, you really haven't missed anything because you can access the recording, watch the recording as many times as you want. You can download the recording to your computer. You have access to the data, to the slides, to the materials, and you can get to watch those things again at your own convenience, all right? So this is the class that started on the 6th of January, 2024. So one of the first things you'd see is the Tenalytics Consistency Project. And this is where you have sort of like an accountability for putting everything you have learned out there. And this is what we always advise people to do, ensuring that you learn in public so that you showcase yourself to the world, all right? And you don't wait for opportunities. You put yourself out there. So if I search, if somebody like Omolara decides that, oh, I'm going to register for business analysis, for example, and Omolara talks about business analysis, on a day-to-day -day basis. When I go on LinkedIn and I search for Omolara's name, it pops up, or I search for business analysis, rather, Omolara's name would pop up as one of the people that have talked about business analysis. And from there, I can start to see that you have experience in that area. And that's how headhunting and poaching eventually comes into being, all right? You have the application, job application tracker. And this is where it's very important that as you apply to jobs, you also track the number of jobs that you apply to because it's not just about putting out the volume, it's about putting quality volume. So you need to also test and track how many positive feedbacks have I gotten by putting out these number of applications. So we have an application tracker that you will use to tracking all your job applications, all right? Interview preparation and clarity session. So you have an interview coming up you don't need to speak with anybody. All you have to do is come to your classroom, go to book an interview prep, and you select either of the two, any of the two links. You click on that, and it takes you into a Calendly page. 
And this is where you select your date, you select your time, and then somebody would work with you to help you prepare for your interview. And that's how you book your interview sessions. You can see this that says creating your portfolio. So as a business analyst, remember, I talked about the very first module you're going to complete, which is Excel, Power BI, and SQL. So all the projects are going to build, you're going to build a portfolio, web-based portfolio that would warehouse all those projects that you have worked on, okay? And remember, it is always competence over credentials. Before anybody would ask you for anything degree, in which nobody would, no recruiter would, they would want to see what you've done and you need to have a portfolio, all right? Well, let's go to the business analysis program itself. The first time you join, you've made payments, you get, you know, to get to be a part of the class. The very first thing you get is a welcome kit, all right? So you get added into the classroom that starts in February, or if you're starting in March, you get added to the March classroom and you receive a welcome kit. And the welcome kit contains everything that you need or everything you need for that class. The applications, how to download and install Excel, download and install Power BI, PostgreSQL, SQL, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's in your welcome kits. Installations, how to install Power BI for Mac, Power BI for Windows, all of those things. You get, you know, detailed um, guide guidelines in installing. And of course, you have your very first Excel class. Okay, now the beauty is the classes are also recorded. So the live class, if you miss the live class, just come into the class recording and everything that happened in class, all the questions that were asked, you have them in the class recording, okay? You just click on the recording, you have access to the class recording for that particular class, okay? And you have access to the slides, the class materials, everything is here. So you get to practice what you missed, even if you missed the class. We don't advise you to miss class. So when I'm emphasizing this, I'm just emphasizing it that you don't miss anything. But we expect that you come to class and you don't miss classes. But even if it happens, and of course, if you miss class once, twice, we're going to prompt you. We have somebody that chases everybody that misses classes. So that person will chase you down, find out what the problem is, if you're having any issues or challenges and so on and so forth, Okay. And when I say that your class is case study based, right from the very first day, you're going to look at a case study for Glow Gadgets. Glow Gadgets is a company that produces eco-friendly electronics, all right? And you're going to be helping Glow Gadgets to solve a particular problem. This would be one of the projects you would add to your portfolio. So you're not learning in abstract. This is an Excel class, but you're not learning Excel by just watching a video. No, every single thing you learn, you're going to put it into practice, solving a problem for a company, okay? So this is the very first Excel, and this is, you start by understanding the Excel environment, okay? What is Excel, the Excel environment, the cells, what is a colon, what is a row? You start with all of that, and then you get into a project. Now, of course, Let's assume that you missed this class, the first Excel class, okay? So let's assume you missed this class and you join the class on Sunday. The Sunday class, of course, the same thing. If you look at the class material, you also have another case study, different case study. And this is what we mean by case study, project-based learning. And these are projects that professionals like myself, if a man are, other industry experts have done in different companies, but we've curated them into case studies for you so that you also get to experience and practice all those things that we've done in the past, okay? So this is a company called Plume. Plume is an e-commerce um, company and you'd work for Plume to help them understand their customer preferences using Excel. You'd help them improve their cart conversions. So customers that have bought items, they've added the items to the carts, but they haven't made payments, okay? So how do you get those customers that add items to their carts? Just like you go and shop on Amazon, okay? You put items and at the end of the day, you don't pay. How do you convert those type of customers? You'd also look at time-based analysis and so on and so forth for this particular organization, okay? Now, let's assume you miss a class, you have assignments, 
okay? You have presentations. Your presentations are very, very important because you get to present your findings. And the presentation is a case study separate from what you've done in class. So you'd have group members in a team. You'd go back, work on these projects together and come to present your findings, okay? Because as a business analyst, you're going to do a lot of presentations. You can't run away from it. So if you are somebody who is shy, you are somebody who has stage fright, before you are done with the program, you would have presented so many times that you overcome that stage fright eventually, all right? You have your very first mentorship session and you have something we call the drop-in session. And why is the drop-in session very important? I'll just talk about this and then we start taking questions. The drop-in session is designed for people who have problems in class or who missed a class. So if you miss a class, you watch the video and you have you still have problems executing the things that were done in class, okay? So you've tried to do it. You've seen the recording. You've tried to do what the trainer did, but you are finding it difficult. The drop-in session is organized during the week, mo most of the time on a Wednesday evening, all right? So you will join that drop-in session together with your trainer, a data coach that would work with you to help you resolve those challenges that you have. So you have that hand holding. So when you speak to people that have been in our programs, you, you, you'd hear them talk about hand holding you. And this is where it comes from. So you don't have to figure things out yourself because during my transition and if you transition, we were figuring things out ourselves and it was very difficult. It was a headache because we've tried everything. It's not just working. And sometimes you just need somebody to tell you, you have one comma instead of two. Or here you're meant to use a semicolon, but you have used um, a comma, okay? And that's all you need the person to tell you and it gets the problem resolved. And those are the type of things you do during the drop-in sessions, okay? So Power BI class one, Power BI class two for the business analysis. And you also have a presentation, a case study with for British Airways. All right, they're going to work on an airline case study. And somebody has used this to get a job. They had an interview and they were asked questions on, oh, tell me, you said you know how to use Power BI. Can you walk me through any project or any problem you've been able to solve using Power BI? And the person gave a detailed explanation of the British Airways case study where he worked with British Airways, helping them understand the customer reviews, what customers were saying about the airline and came up with recommendations to help the airline optimize not just um, the customer experience, but also their pricing at different levels based on the customer segments that he was able to identify. And that was what landed him the job eventually. So you have your mentorship sessions, your SQL classes, and again, every single thing you do is what? on this platform and everything here is yours. You can come back anytime to access and this serves as a reference for you, okay? So we'll go back to take a few questions and then we'll start to call it a day. Um, let's see. Somebody's asking, will it be possible for me or I will need a work permit to be able to secure a job even while in school? So as a student, you have limitations, okay? You can get jobs, you'll get jobs, no doubt about that, all right? But you have limitations with regards to um, your the number of hours you can work, 20 hours and so on. However, something that our participants also do is if you are in the UK or you are in Canada, you can apply to remote jobs in the US. And if you are working outside the country, you don't have that limitation. When I was doing my master's, I was working for at least three different companies. Okay, at least three different companies. I was working for a company back in Nigeria. I was working for um, one in the US and another one um, in Canada. Three different companies at the same time. Okay, so the rule of 20 hours did not apply to me because I was not working for a company inside the UK. Um, somebody's saying, can this program help someone with this? Okay, I think if you has answered that question already. 
Um, yeah. So if you have more questions, please send in your questions. You have the opportunity to pick our brains um, for the next five to 10 minutes uh, before we call it a day. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to the slide. Somebody said I should display the fees again, which I'm just going to do. And let's take more questions, okay? Somebody's asking, all right, I think that has been answered. Okay, Kelechi is asking <laughs> a very long question. So let me try to answer this. You started from Excel, Power BI, ETC until Python. Do you think it should have been difficult if you had started? Absolutely, and that's what we keep on telling people. Even your data science program, if you are starting the data science, you don't start with Python. You don't start with that. And that's a big mistake people make. You just go start learning Python. What the hell? You have no experience. You're going to find it very difficult. You find it frustrating and you drop off, you drop out. And I've interacted with so many people like that. Right, so even your even the data science program, you start with statistics because that's the foundation. All right, you don't jump into just building. No, even when building a house, what happens? You design the house first of all. There's an architectural design. There is a survey of the land, and before people start to dig up, and then you lay the blocks, you do your foundation. So your statistics is the foundation. All right, then you move into Excel for forecasting, predictive analytics as a data scientist. You move into Tableau and then you move into SQL. This gives you everything. And the funny thing is every single tool I just talked about, they have some level of convergence. So when you understand Excel, it helps with you understanding another tool, not directly, but indirectly, because one way or the other, you, you now understand the language within the data science ecosystem, okay? So Tableau becomes a little bit easier. Python now, be, now makes sense when you're working with Python at that stage, okay? So if you are starting data science and you start with Python, you're going to run into so many trouble. Uh, from experience, I think as a beginner, it's better to start with either data analytics and grow into data engineering or cybersecurity. Not really, they're totally these are different, mutually exclusive career paths, okay? Mutually exclusive. One is not the prerequisite to the other one. If you want to become a data analyst today, fantastic, you start. You learn all the rudiments, all the skills. Data science, the same. Data engineering, the same. And that's why you see the programs, the data engineering curriculum. The very first thing you start is introduction into data engineering. And if I show you the, the classroom for data science, the very first class you would have, your, the question is, what is data? Okay, you're not going to jump to build anything. No, you start from that foundation. So they are mutually exclusive programs designed with the beginner in mind, and you don't need any experience or one being a prerequisite. Um, you're also saying, you may not understand that certifi certificates isn't necessary in the field of tech, but from what you both said, I then you later went to the UK, did a master's. After I did my master's, I've never worked with any other company. The master's is a feel good for me, like I said. Same with the Femena, to feel good. No single organization. And remember, I had done five years as a data analyst. I had done another two years as a data scientist. Okay? And that was after I went to do my master's. As a feel good. So if I tell you I have a master's in big data science and technology, from a university in the UK. It sounds good in the ears to you, but not to the recruiter, okay? So it's more of just a feel good and not a prerequisite to you getting a job. Nobody ever asks me or nobody cares if I have a I don't even put it on my profile. You will not see it there. Cause like I said, it's just a feel good um, to have that. Certificate is never a plus. If you are getting into the space, never a plus. I'm telling you this categorically based on my experience, Efemena's experience, and the people we've been able to help to transition. I know it's difficult to declutter that understanding because the Nigerian mindset is chase the paper, which is chase the certificates. That's the mindset. But it's a mindset built on a very false foundation that does not exist 
in the developed economy. And that's the reality, all right? Geraldine is asking, as a PR professional, which DA or HR? Geraldine, it depends on what you want to do, really. And as a data analyst or as a HR analyst, you still work with data. The difference is that as a HR analyst, you work with people-related data. And as a data analyst, you work with different other types of data, not just people. Okay, so for somebody who's a PR professional, you can apply to jobs in any of the areas, all right? And as a data analyst, the demand in Canada is absolutely phenomenal. A HR analyst as well. We have a HR analyst working with Telos, one of the largest telecommunications company, and her title says HR data analyst. That's the title of her job. Her name is Maureen. She's on our slide, and you'd see the slide when you receive that. Okay, um, which roles are less client facing? Um, so less client facing roles, you want to look at data engineering, you want to look at cybersecurity, um, you also want to look at which other roles. For any role analytics, we're going to face clients. As a business analyst, we're going to face clients. Um, and when I say clients, I mean both internal and external stakeholders, okay? Um, as a data analyst, you're going to do a lot of presentations to show your findings to the business. It could be your, your line manager, it could be your director, it could be a chief, one of the chiefs in the business or so on, All right? But constantly you're going to showcase and present your findings to people because they need to take decisions, all right? Same as a data scientist, same as a HR analyst, as a financial analyst. So when you see analysts, in any any role, it's when when I say client, I don't mean external clients because your clients are not just external as an analyst; they are also internal, which are the which is the business itself. The business is your very first client, okay, and those are your stakeholders. So, data engineering is not client facing, not really client facing in the sense that you are not going to be doing a lot of presentations and analyzing insights and so on and so forth. You are more focused on creating the structure, the data pipelines and so on and so forth. All right, same with the cybersecurity analyst too. So I don't know if that's explained. Yes, you get a certification BSS. You do get a certification um, at the end of the program. And it's just a certificate to say that you have completed the program and these are the skills that you have learned, okay? So if you go on LinkedIn and you do a search on Tenalytics, you'd see our participants who have posted um, their certificates after completing the program, okay? I think we've done a good job. When is the deadline? The deadline, Geraldine, is after the first 10 people have made payments. After the first 10 people have made payments, that's the deadline. Okay, and registration also closes on Wednesday, the 31st of January, okay? So take advantage and get into the class if you're interested. Yes, Kelechi is already in. I know you made payments a long time ago, Kelechi. Well, Kelechi keeps on joining all the master classes. I'm sure you're, you are very eager to start and always want to keep on learning. Um, I can feel the drive and I'm excited about that too, Kelechi. Um, I am currently a customer service for an IT software company. Uh, which analyst role? As a customer service professional, Faith, two roles I, I can recommend to you, but you need to decide on the one to take, the data analyst or the data scientist role. And that's because as a customer analyst, you have, as a data analyst or data scientist, you have a lot of use case in a customer service role, because you can always also leverage that experience in those two career paths, all right? So you can say things like you've done customer segmentation for that particular organization. You help to analyze the um, customer complaints to identify where the, the main issues were, and you help to come up with recommendations to solve those problems. All right, you can come up with so many analyses that you help to also determine the 
customer preference using by building a machine learning model as a data scientist. And this helped the business to tailor products and services to those customers. Okay, so as a customer service rep, I would say look at data analytics, look at data science. That gives you a very good experience. And also as a business analyst too, absolutely. And also as a business analyst, because as a business analyst, you interact with your customers who are also stakeholders of the business and you get a um, very good use case for that too. So look at data analytics, data science, and business analysis. How is your relationship with Robert Half? Um, it's a partnership. All these recruitment agencies, and let me give you a bit of a you know breakdown on the way it works. These recruitment agencies also want to hire um, talents and fix them into companies, okay? So the more talents they have access to, the more chances they have at getting the right person to fit into a particular role. Okay, so what we, what we do is to provide them with more access to talents that we can vouch for and we know that have the skills to get the job done. Okay, so it's you getting access to companies, interviews, and so on. You do well in those interviews, which would work with you on. It's now, it becomes easier for you to get your foot into the door. All right. And for anybody who has more questions, oh, I'm in supply chain, I'm in retail, I'm in banking, we have a masterclass, not a masterclass, we have a clarity session on Tuesday, okay, a clarity session on Tuesday. So you have these specific questions, oh, I'm in supply chain, I'm in logistics, I'm in aviation, I'm in customer service, what's the best way for me, all right? Secure the discounts, make your payments to be a part of the program, and then join us on Tuesday, okay? We'll send you the invite for the clarity session. So it's, it's a more one-on-one -on -one session where you have yourself and a few other people who have these specific questions. Myself, I'll be there. If a man, I'll be there. I would help you make um, that decision eventually, okay? And Geraldine is asking that type of specific question, okay? So I need to ask you so many questions to even advise you know, what's your background? What are you looking to get into? Where are you located? Are you in the UK? Are you in Canada? And so on and so forth, okay? So, so many questions we need to ask. And we can ask you during that session because of time. Um, so what I would advise you, Geraldine, secure the discounts. When it gets to the part where you select the specific program, select I need to speak with a professional and we would send you an invite for the one-on-one -on -one clarity session. Can you help someone who is interested in software development? Unfortunately, Matthias, we don't offer software development. We can only support somebody that we can vouch for their skills. We have they've gone through our program, which we know that if you've gone through the Tenalytics program, it's a thorough, immersive program that equips you with the skills to get the job done on the on the first day. So we know we are supplying the best talent. All right. Unfortunately, we don't have. Um, software development as one of uh, the programs we offer. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we pretty much answered all the questions that we have. When is the deadline for the discounted offer? I think I've answered that already. All right, so I think we can start um, drawing the curtains for today. And what I would advise you is you want to get into the program, take advantage of the discounts currently, because as soon as the discount runs out and we get to Wednesday, at the end of Wednesday, registration is closed and the access to the class would also be closed. You have a friend, you have a colleague, a brother, a relative that you think can also benefit from this. Share the message with them and let them also take be a part of it and um, transition into tech in the year 20. 24, January is gone already, all right? And we are moving into February next week. And that's how fast the year is also going to go by. And we've had conversations with people who they recommended somebody to join. And the person they recommended joined, completed the program, got a job in the UK. And the person that recommended did not join. <laughs> and he's still job searching, okay? So it's something you want to start, get into it and get started as early as you can so that the transition also 
that the transition process starts as early as possible too. Are there chances of work from home in the UK? That's the normal today. That's the norm, precious. Okay, working from home is the norm. You have the opportunity to negotiate. And we have some of our participants who only have to go to the office once in a month. Okay, some once in two months. It depends on what this, the organization would want you want from you. Okay, some people living as far as in Stevenage. Stevenage in the UK, working in London, and they just have to go to the office once um, in a month, you know, just to ensure that they have that interaction with their colleagues. You receive your welcome kits tomorrow. It's one week to the program before you receive the welcome kits. So from Monday, the welcome kits will start rolling out to everybody that have registered, TA. Okay. My LinkedIn profile is my name. Just go on LinkedIn, type in my name, Adesa Suleiman, type in Ephemena Ipro, or type in Tenalytics, and would all pop up, all right? So send me a connection request, send Ephemena a connection request. I'll be happy to connect with all of you, okay? So I think we're going to draw the curtains here at this time. I'm not sure we have any other questions. Is it possible to get sponsorship? Henry, all the people we've showcased so far, is it possible? That's not the question. The question is how early can I get sponsorship? Not is it possible? All our participants that got jobs as data analysts with the NHS, with different other organizations, it came with sponsorship, 100%, all right? Um, with, I don't want to go back to those areas, but sponsorship is the goal. Trust me, um, Henry, that's what you want to get. If you're in the UK, you can see 20, 20. All right, let me just highlight this. This is full sponsorship, all right, in the UK. If you look at, um, what's her name? Okay, I think I passed that. This is also um, ICMAT. ICMAT also in the UK. I'm sure you're in the UK, um, Henry. It's also full visa sponsorship also in the UK, all right? So sponsorship is not a possibility. Sponsorship is the goal. And there are different strategies in obtaining the sponsorship and how to apply, where to apply, the companies that will give you the COS, the companies you should focus on, the industry you should focus on to get those opportunities. And that's why you have us with the experience to guide you through, okay? How early is dependent on so many factors? Uh, it depends on how many times you apply and so on. But again, you can't get everything in a one, two, three hour session in a masterclass like this. And that's why you need to be a part of the program, Precious. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Um, if we, you want to add, you know, any last words before we call it a day? Uh, nothing much. Uh, the key thing is, like I mentioned, three things you need to look at. And uh, one thing that really helped us get started and also succeed is we started. So you can keep postponing and keep postponing and keep, you know, uh, keep, you know, pushing the due dates further into the future. One thing you should have at the back of your mind that if you start, okay, most majority of the guys that, you know, you watch their testimonials on YouTube that have gone through analytics and they've gotten a job. One thing that was resounding was at the start of the year, they never knew they were going to get a job in that desired career part, but you know they took the chance with analytics and they were able to get that job. Now, just put yourself in that situation, okay? To ask yourself, if I don't do, if I don't take this chance at this point in time, what would I be doing? You'll still be doing your normal job. You'll still be doing the same thing. Uh, if you take the opportunity, there's an opportunity, all right, for you. There's a bigger opportunity for you to get better job, better pay, better opportunities. And, uh, you know, you just get to, you know, earn better than majority of the people that you have around you. So if you're looking at a person that wants to take that chance, this is the best time for you to take that chance. And uh, you're going to be working with people that want you to succeed. That's what you should have at the back of your mind. And it's the reason why every time we're speaking, we draw back to the vision, which is getting more Africans into the tech space. Um, if majority of the places that we work at the moment, you sit get there and you don't see an African, all right? So, you know, that's the whole concept for us. That's the old bull of contention for us to get more Africans in the tech space. And if you want to be part of those people, if you want to be part of the testimonials that we're going to be sharing in the future, please get started. Start now. 
All right? Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. If you have a friend, recommend that friend. If you have a family member, recommend them. You might not be able to afford it, but somebody else can afford it. And you don't know, that person might be able to get the job and later afford it for you. You never can tell. <laughs> All right, but you should recommend at the end of everything. It never hurts you for you to recommend. You see the great work we're doing. And uh, please, you know, start with us and you will never regret it, okay? Thank you very much, guys. On that note, that's it for me anyways. Um, cheers, guys. All right, thanks a lot. If we give to saying I need somebody I can communicate with, a mentor specifically. The mentorship is something we offer on all our programs, gifts. And all you need to do is to register. You'll be a part of the program. Mentorship is every single week. Every single week. And you need somebody to speak to. You see where I showed you in the classroom to schedule your interview and also clarity session. You have specific things, personal stuff you want to discuss with your facilitator or you want to have a conversation with me. You are just a message, an email, a phone call away from having that, um, you know, one-to-one -one session, all right? So the access is for you to get registered gifts, okay? Thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful week ahead. It was a fantastic weekend, and I hope you had an amazing time joining us this evening, and you learned one or two things from our story and how you can also get your own journey started as well. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I look forward to seeing you in class starting on the 3rd of February and to get your journey started as well. Cheers, everybody, and have an amazing time.